Hi, I recently had a debate partnering up with T-Jump against Awake Souls and a Limitless Channel. It was very interesting. The first 15 minutes, there were technical difficulties, so I've snipped that off the front. We got denial, we got cognitive dissonance, we've got memes, and we've got a whole lot of not understanding going on. Hope you enjoy. Here, we're actually going to have somebody to respond to these, and I'm excited about that. The second thing is flat earth proofs. We're going to be focusing on rivers. I've got a video about this. Um, the third's how perspective works on a flat plane and not a globe. The fourth is materialism and atomism is Kabbalism, just like heliocentrism. Um, the fifth, the origin of heliocentrism, we're going to be going over. Six clouds behind the sun. This is a big one. I I've stated for a long time that, that this is the number one way for a person to be able to prove to yourself that you are in a virtual reality. Uh, ninth is sky shadows pointing to the sun's location in the circle of sight. The tenth is heliocentrism is Kabbalah. All right. The eleventh is planes flying through the sun debunks overexposure being the explanation for clouds behind the sun. The twelfth is the green flash and water liftoffs that we see when filming the sun what we actually witness. And the 13th is gonna be how far can we see? So um, we're gonna be showing the limits of sight and uh, how things work on a flat plane today. Hey, I um, might even have 13 memes to add into the content too. <laughs> Who knew Friday the 13th could be such a fun day. I think T-Jump's back. How are you doing T-Jump? Uh, good, can you guys hear me now? And the audio? Yeah people can in the audience can hear you now so that's working oh they can should i do the intro again <laughs> sure, <laughs> yeah okay let me do it again real quick i had a good test for to go through it so hi i want to introduce myself hey, you know what actually mr sensible why don't you go first please Excuse oh intro again. So intro again yes okay i'm an ordinary guy not a scientist um i follow the science um on youtube my life has mainly been debunking or trying to debunk flat earth with a little bit of humor and a little bit of science and i think that's about it in a nutshell uh you're muted oh, that's okay i should be unmuted that's great i like how you said you follow the science because that's what we're trying to ask people today so hey nice to meet all you on t-jump side and mr sensible side i am ron the creator of the youtube channel the limitless i'm excited to be here present right now for this discussion about reality the one that we live in. So unfortunately, we will not be sharing the quote, straw man, fake Freemasonic UN pressurized pizza dome that's flying in outer space with its never setting shrinking sun traveling over infinite ponds. We're not going to have any of that. If you'd like to see any of that coverage, check us out at our link in our chat on Telegram at Reality Check. But what we do want to try to attempt today is to show you how our realm actually works with repeatable, measurable observations that we can all actually go out and do ourselves. I know for sure already that you're going to be reality deniers. So, okay, I do. But what I ask as you of you is that you put aside your pre-programmed indoctrination and allow the evidence to speak for itself today. <clears throat> and lastly, excuse me, heliocentrism was created by Kabbalistic mystics to give people a creation to worship instead of the creator itself, who is inside of you. And that's it for my intro. Thank you guys for having me on. That's great. So did you catch the 13 points that uh, I plan on covering today, T-Jump? Did I do, did do what about 13 points? Did you catch the 13 points? Where you, did you hear that? I did not know. Okay. So let's let's go through the 13 points that we're going to be going through, and uh, I want to find out which ones you you guys enjoy the most. But these are number one heliocentric debunks that no glober has been able to respond to. All right, that's the first topic. Second one, flat Earth proofs. We're going to have a focus on rivers. Uh, third, how perspective works on a flat plane and not a globe. Fourth, materialism or atomism is Kabbalism. Fifth, the origin of heliocentrism. Six, clouds behind the sun. Seventh, the emboss filter. Eighth, plane, planes above the sun and moon. Ninth, sun shadows pointing to the sun's location in the circle of sight. Tenth, heliocentrism is Kabbalah. Eleventh, planes flying through the sun debunks overexposure being the explanation for clouds behind the sun. And twelfth, the green flash and water liftoffs that we actually uh, film with cameras like the P1000, P900, 
And then how far can we actually see? So the limitations of our circle of sight. So these are the topics we want to get into. Is there anything that you want to cover before we start looking at some stuff? I don't know, Mr. Sensible, what do you think? Do you have a preference? No, I'm happy just to get stuck straight into it because I'm not All sure right. how much time we're looking at, but I haven't got forever. Gotcha. 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 Uh, yeah, anything's fine with me. I don't care. Like at least two hours, I think, right, Jay? Yeah, well, we'll see what we can get, get through. Uh, some of this information is going to be really interesting, and we may get stuck uh, in an area for a while. So let's get the screen share going, and let's see how that goes. But thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Make sure any questions that the audience has on T-Jumps that you super chat them. I don't know how much you're going to do this, but send them to Zazel chats. And then I want to hopefully have some great interaction with T-Jumps chat where they come up with good debunks and content and comments about the content that Jason's going to share. And I'm not going to talk over either of you two. If you guys want to interject at any time, just, you know, I just put my hand up sometimes. It's easier to communicate that way. I'm just going to be quiet and allow Jason to present. And I, I can't wait. I'm really excited to get, you know, a, a globe earthers or a heliocentric models perspective on the things that we've been trying to discuss with heliocentrists for years now. So thanks, Jason. If you're ready, I'm going to mute. You haven't screen shared. Oh, thanks. Thank you. Also the uh, sound. Make sure sometimes, because when we go live, sometimes you forget to click that button, right? But anyways, let's go, everybody. Arms up. It's going to be fun. Do you guys have, was clouds behind the sun one of the options? It was. Yeah, it is. That, that would be a good one to start with. That one's fun. Yeah, it is fun. But what we want to do is establish that heliocentrism has been debunked. So with this video, what I did is it's really just a study of the moon and how the moon debunks heliocentrism because there's so many different ways to debunk it but uh, with this one i gotta ask you guys from heliocentrism what is your explanation for there not being a lunar eclipse every single month simple the moon isn't always directly in between the um, earth and the sun okay great yeah so do you know what they call that that area the area that um you can't have an eclipse Right, or the area that you can have a, have an eclipse. So they refer to it as the lunar nodes in heliocentrism, and their lunar nodes are at the equinox. So what we're going to be doing is taking a look at the heliocentric model, their explanation for there not being a, a lunar eclipse every single month, and, and see how this works out. So let's check this, this debunk out. Number three. I want to give special attention to heliocentric debunk number four because it is the most easily verifiable debunk of heliocentrism in my opinion. Let's focus on the fact that the only time a lunar or solar eclipse could ever hmm? take place in heliocentrism is that... All right, so do you see this here? We've got, uh, this is right from timeanddate.com. This is standard heliocentric graphics here. And what we have here is the March equinox and the fall equinox that are the times that um, they say are the only times that lunar eclipses can take place. So oh, hold because, on, we've got, to, we've got to slow you down here. What you've got is a problem with your pass through on your audio. So you've got to um, rewind the video, hit play and watch on your audio direct link and make sure you see that red bar coming all the way to the top because we're getting comments. Can people hear me talking right now? Because my audio is cranked and uh, I want to make sure that everyone is saying there's no audio. And if there is no audio, Jason has to go in and switch that. Um, it could be also the way that your screen sharing zoom, but it should be passing your audio through. I can hear it on my zoom feed, but I don't think that zoom or the OBS. I it, yeah, uh, I hear. I hear the video. To he Do you see the, the OBS bouncing? Yes. You you do? When I talk, you see, you hear me clearly because they're saying on the other side of the screen that they don't hear me. I don't understand what's what's going on with the sounds. Mm, no, it uh, it's clearly. I'm getting internal sound. On it's OBS. bouncing up on the OBS. Then it should okay. be good. Maybe everybody's just behind us on the stream. Let me try um, boosting it a little bit. Yeah, sometimes I have to keep mine a little boosted too. I just watch that line and make sure that you know what you're doing. I'm just trying to talk while we get these few things ironed out. Uh, cannot hear Ronnie or the video. That is crazy. I've been talking the whole time. I think T-Jump and uh, Mr. Sensible can hear me, right? 
Yeah, I can hear both you and the video and the stream, my stream. Once you screen share, video. yeah, there's an issue with the screen share, but if it's showing it bouncing on the OBS screen, it should be good. Mm -hmm. I don't know why it's not. Uh... Well, and the thing is, is we we don't have to, uh, we don't need the audio and the video. So we can what? go through it and analyze this. Yeah, we can just go itself. to the Wikipedia for lunar nodes. They have lots of Debunk work number too. four. Yeah, this is the graphic that you're going to find, right? Uh, No. It might be similar, but it, I, I, the one on Wikipedia makes more sense to me. So what's, what's, the issue? Issue? what's the issue with this with this graphic then? What's the issue with it? So at the equinoxes, right, this is the only time you can have eclipses of the, the moon or the sun, right? And the, the, well... On the equinoxes, let's, and let's you still need to boot, you need to boost up your desktop audio. Nobody can hear everybody clearly. You just double click on the I desktop. Did boost it up. Yeah. Well, yeah. I don't. They're they're still saying that everyone else is quiet. So we're now talking. They can barely hear T Jump or Mister Sensible. I don't understand why they're having this problem. We've tested this twenty times. The equinox report is the question was why don't we see uh, an eclipse each month? And the answer is because. E Eclipses only take place supposedly in the heliocentric model during the equinox period. That's the answer that you get yeah. off Wikipedia, yeah. right? Well, uh, sure, sure. So if you could just go to the picture on Wikipedia, it explains it pretty clearly. The Wikipedia one shows exactly how oh, if the moon is, uh, if the tilt of the moon, since it's on the rotation isn't perfectly perpendicular to the rotation of the Earth around the sun, if the moon is above or below the Earth relative to the sun, then the shadow won't go on the earth and you won't have an eclipse yeah that's it, that's this graphic that we're like, looking at i right can't here. see that at all it's just, well it's like t jump's black. channel has the good audio so let's just move on and we'll deal with our end any way possible as long as his audience is getting the good quality of audio we're going to just move on and they could probably hear the screen share volume too so we can just go forward with the sound everything the way that it was jason start again yeah well thank you david pack we are into this graphic and, and here is the debunk of heliocentrism right here because the March and fall equinoxes are the only times in heliocentrism that you could have a lunar or solar eclipse. All right. So these graphics where the June solstice and the December solstice is, I'm going to zoom into them in the heliocentric explanation right here of, all right, I'm going to focus focus now on what it says is impossible you can play the sound it works great here the june solstice the model literally makes it impossible for either a lunar or solar eclipse anywhere near these dates so do you guys see and recognize the heliocentric model here this was your explanation for how there's not a lunar or solar eclipse every month Sure. Right. Right. The moon's too high and the moon is too low. Sure. All right. So do do you recognize that, Mr. Sensible? Well, the 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 moon's orbital rotation is at an inclination. So uh, I mean obviously there's always a shadow. That shadow is a cone. Um, but if it doesn't intersect with the earth, you won't get an eclipse. If it does intersect, you will. All right. But so the heliocentric explanation for why we don't have a lunar or solar eclipse every month is that at the solstices, because of the five degree tilt of the moon to the ecliptic plane, right? And the earth's tilted 23 and a half degrees, that that puts the moon too high or the moon too low to be eclipsing, correct? Sure, yeah, what's, sometimes what's, what's the, the argument here? Yeah, right, I, we'll I don't what happens. We, we, we both acknowledge that sometimes the shadow will miss the Earth, then there's no eclipse. Right. If we look so, up the dates of projected lunar and solar eclipses, will we get any outside the narrow window of the equinoxes, which are the... All right, so a big popular eclipse, June 21st. Can anybody tell me what day of the year June 21st is? No idea, but the summer solstice doesn't summer, show anything Summer about solstice. Months. Mm -hmm. quarter of the year past the equinox okay this is exactly in the range where heliocentrism says it's too June high solstice too isn't low. anywhere on the picture there's no there's no solstice part that's that's something you added so that's not in there 
So the, oh. there's the Earth's orbital plane, and then there's the Moon's orbital plane. And when those two align with the Sun, you get the eclipses. It hasn't, it doesn't, there's no months. There's no months anywhere on this picture. It doesn't exist on this picture. Do you recognize this? Do I recognize this? This graphic here? No. No? Mr. No, Sensible, do you recognize this graphic? Sorry, what, what aspect of it? Um, I mean, that's shown the Earth tilted about 23 and a half degrees, rotating around, uh, orbiting around the sun. Yeah, uh, it's heliocentrism, uh, right? Yeah. Well, so, uh, I, I what's definitely, the, the sun's the in the middle there. What's yeah, the arrow so showing? The June solstice, right? It's supposed to be, the northern hemisphere is supposed to be tilted towards the sun. The December solstice tilted away. Do you understand where the months line up with the equinoxes and the solstices? Yes. Right. Right. T jump was acting like he didn't like the debunk of this was that this isn't the June solstice when you literally using the heliocentric graphics. But uh, uh, I mean, the, the, the moon is constantly orbiting around the earth. It cycles within cycles within cycles. You've got rotation of the earth orbit of the moon, the orbit of uh, the earth around the sun. Sometimes those cycles will line up, and sometimes they won't. No, lunar and solar eclipses. Let's go back to this graphic here. All right, the June solstice. The explanation for why we do not have lunar or solar eclipses every single month is that the moon is either too high or too low, making it impossible to have a lunar or solar eclipse at the solstices. Yet when you search for soul, uh, for eclipses, list of solar eclipses of the 21st century, the very first Will one Will we that get any missed, outside the narrow window of the equinoxes? Is June 21st. I never said it was solstice. impossible. Like that's not a thing. Like the tilt from the moon uh, relative to the sun is like five degrees. So it's still possible. Like I don't see, I never claimed it was impossible. There's no issue here. Like this would not in any way be a problem with the heliocentric model. No, it, what, what's not getting through your head? Because we literally have heliocentrism saying it's impossible. Right no, here. no, there's, there's no point where it says it's impossible there. <laughs> it says it too says high or too low tilt. And so at the top of that circle, it wouldn't happen for that diagram. That's all it says. It doesn't say anything about it being impossible. It's not in anywhere, anywhere in the diagram. <laughs> All right. Well, let's not like, like belabor the check. point is too it, much. What is your question? There's, is it possible to have an eclipse during the June solstice? Is that that's your question? In the heliocentric model. Yes. Well, I mean, everybody pretty much. Well, the model most, demands most that they happen during the, on the heliocentric model. They just stated that they happen during the equinoxes. The solstices uh, are again a th another three months later. An annual eclipse appears as a partial eclipse over a region of the Earth's thousands of years kilometers, thousands of kilometers wide. The eclipse will start only a few hours after the northern solstice, and most of the path will increase uh, across areas within with midnight sun. Yes. Solar eclipse, June twenty first, twenty thirty nine. So yes, yes. There's there's no. Yeah, so um, he said, yes, we can. No problem. De debunked there. Now we've got more. Well, there's no I, debunk there's... there. Like our model says, yes, you can have those. No, you... no, no. Where I'm showing everybody the model literally. You know, that's a picture. That's a picture. That doesn't say that they're impossible. That's the it heliocentric that... model. That is the oh, heliocentric that's model. Picture. Well, it's one snapshot of the heliocentric yeah. model. One well, snapshot. Four snapshots. Specifically, <laughs> specifically for the reason of explaining why there is not a lunar and solar eclipse every single month. Right. And you picked a picture of one example where the picture does not show any shadow. Does that entail that the heliocentric model <laughs> says that they are impossible? No, it does not, does not say that. All right. There's more ways to debunk it. Let's go to a heliocentric debunk number three. Number two. There is another closely linked debunk of heliocentrism, and that is the direction that the path of totality shows up. The path of totality could only show up on the ground as traveling from east to west due to the direction of rotation of Earth. Let's zoom in here a little bit and watch. The path of totality of a solar eclipse is a narrow, roughly 70 mile wide band that experiences the sun fully blocked by the moon. 
with Earth spinning in the direction required for sunrise to be in the east and sunset in the west, we can clearly see that all eclipses must begin in the east and travel west. This is an unarguable well, so point. I do want to in comment the on one thing. So like the original point you made was that uh, lunar eclipses don't happen every month, which is fine. No, I asked you the explanation the for explanation. why lunar eclipses right, right. don't and, happen and every month. And you said it's too said, high and too low. We were, and then you said it was impossible for them to happen in this month. Those are two different claims that are completely unrelated. So like saying that here's a reason why they don't happen every month and here's the reason why it's impossible to happen in this particular month. Those are two different claims and the second claim wasn't being defended there. I don't know like why you just deflected on this completely irrelevant topic. Because I've got so many other debunks for us to get through. Well, let's let's cover this one. You're, you're saying that, that uh, the shadow should travel from east to west because of the direction of rotation of the earth but look at that diagram you've got up right now mm -hmm. look at the arrows for the orbit of the moon it's going counterclockwise there yeah so the shadow will move from from west to east the moon is is tracking across or the shadow of the moon is tracking across the earth comparatively quickly the earth is turning slowly if 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 the earth was spinning at the sort of speed you're showing in that diagram, then yes, it would appear from east to west. But in reality, the the moon and its shadow is is crossing the the path of the Earth uh, you're, more quickly. You're, so you're, the 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 amount of time that it takes for the shadow to go across Earth is another one of the heliocentric debunks that we're going to be getting to. Ronnie, what did you? let's take it back to the actual debunk here is we we are actually locating the direction of the eclipse shadow itself let's stay on topic that's what yeah, i was so, talking about yeah so here the animation makes it real simple for a person to not get confused because the earth is rotating the correct direction here for sunrise mm -hmm. in the east and sunset in the west and the cat the shadow is being cast right here we do understand that the moon is moving as well in heliocentrism and we're going to be addressing that but uh, as far as the direction that the shadow would show up on earth you can clearly see that if it's hitting a, a spot like this East and travel and west earth is rotating this is an unarguable. Yeah, if you can go back to that animation mm -hmm. what that animation shows is the moon stationary casting a shadow and the earth rotating beneath it the moon is moving faster the shadow of the moon is moving faster what your animation is not showing is a moving shadow it's just showing a moving earth now if um on the scale you're talking about because that's hideously out of scale uh the moon would be traveling a lot quicker and so that shadow would be moving from uh, west to east left uh, from about 10 o'clock till four o'clock on, on your diagram where that red line is, it'd be going the other way. Well, you've because sort it's of, moving quicker. you've sort of stepped into it because we're both going to show that the direction that the, that the eclipse, uh, starts and the length of duration are both heliocentric debunks as well. So in this case, the, the earth spinning like this would cast a shadow that travels from the east to the west, because you can see it on the east coast of Brazil. So it must play, begin now it's at the west yes, coast that is what your animation shows but the reality uh, f for that animation to be more accurate that moon needs to be moving well i'll we'll be getting into that one well, wait, so, well let's just stick with this one right now so what mr sensible said makes perfect sense if the moon is moving faster than the earth then the rate the moon will move when it hits the shadow is going to be significantly faster than the Earth's rotation in the other direction. And so the, <laughs> the speed of the shadow will actually be going from west to east because the speed of the moon is significantly faster than the rotation of the Earth. And so even though if the Earth was rotating, it wouldn't be rotating fast enough to make the shadow <laughs> so, go in the other direction. So you're pulling model size Earth speed fallacy is your interjection but that still doesn't debunk the fact that the shadow is traveling in the opposite direction that it would be if the earth was spinning continuing on jason go to your next no, no, point this, yeah, that so literally people... doesn't make sense so like even if the earth is spinning it makes sense no 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 it doesn't well, so like if, if the earth is spinning say, say i have a spinning ball spinning ball and then i have an object that's blocking like a shadow because i have a light right there so there's a shadow here now if i'm spinning but my hand moves faster the shadow the speed of the shadow will be the speed of my hand minus the opposite rotation of the ball right 
So like if my if my hand you're, crosses the light, you're just getting the speed of the shallow yourself. will That's... be the speed of my hand. And then if we'll the get to speed the speed of the earth is going the opposite <laughs> direction, it'll be minus or the same direction. It'll be minus this speed, but it'll still be a positive speed from west to east, won't it? Well, it's, at least you're it's in the video to, already. You you uh, at least he's sorry, Jason. At least he's alluding ahead. towards speeds. No, it's a good thing that you guys are queuing up the mental processes that think about how the speeds would actually take place. But continue, brother. All right, so here's another way of looking at the debunk. Another way to debunk heliocentrism is that we can literally map which direction an eclipse has to happen and at what time. If the Earth is moving this way 67,000 miles per hour and the Moon is traveling this way 2,288 miles per hour, then to have an eclipse, be it total or annular or partial, the path of the eclipse must be from the south to the north during the March equinox. You guys get that? No, I have no you idea what you're how, talking about. Well, you saw the arrows, right? Yeah. 67,000 miles an hour orbiting the sun. The moon, 2,288 miles per hour. Yeah, I see the numbers. Around the conclusion Earth, part. Right? So you were talking about the, the two going two different directions and what that, what that entails, right? Yeah. How it... Right, so it's it is all mapped out here, wait, and what, one of the things that you can see—we we were talking about the rotation speed of the Earth. The rotation speed of the Earth relative to the Moon is slower. A thousand than miles an hour at the equator. The Earth is traveling sixty thousand miles around the galactic center. And he's rotation, stating that the Moon is traveling speed, two thousand two hundred and eighty-eight rotation, rotation. The Moon rotation. doesn't rotate. We've only ever seen one face of it. It's very simple to pay attention. <laughs> I think I think you guys are throwing <laughs> off like, oh, we don't understand. This is retarded. Let's be adults here. At the beginning of this, we said we were going to look at stuff from an objective reality. As yeah, just look, we're just looking for truth. You're look, just constantly look, saying that everything look, we're showing is stupid because you don't understand it. How is this? No, a we good do understand. We do look, understand. Well, look, look, attention. Let, look, let them go, Ronnie. Let them go. Look at a clock. Look at the hour hand. The Earth is rotating at half that speed. May I share my screen for a minute? Just for a minute. Now you're going into size relations and trying to no, 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 mind it, control people out of reality. We're showing well, the measurements I'm, I'm of the speeds of the luminaries and your planet Earth and what would happen during an eclipse. It's simple. Ronnie. Ronnie, I just want to, to clarify demonstrate how your 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 diagram. Your animation is wrong. I'll show you one image and it will show how that diagram is wrong. It's from the internet of the global heliocentric model. No, no, this, it is, created. this is measured. This is, no, no, this it, is it was your number. Jason didn't make that. Did you make that and create it all and put the, no, you. Ronnie, your no, numbers were the wrong cap. Part. Your numbers it's were from the wrong timeanddate.com. I mean, <laughs> what are you guys saying? The, the heliocentric, you guys are debunking the heliocentric no. model live. No. Look at this. Now we have eclipses traveling north, south, east, and west. Ronnie, all Ronnie, in your same yes. Ronnie, it's our turn to talk. Go ahead. It's our turn to talk. So uh, can you, uh, I don't know. Can you see, see the diagram I'm sharing? Yes. You see the total solar so, so, path 2001 to 2025. Yeah, they're all curves. Your diagram shows with that red line, it shows the shadow in a straight line. Yes. The shadow travels in a straight line, but it appears on the earth in a curve. Now that's not just some, some, um, meme. Those are actual measured things. If you're in those areas, you will see the eclipse. If you're out of those areas, you won't. Mr. Sensible, that, that graphic, you're going to laugh. You are going to laugh because if all I had to do is pl hit play for like another second, right? We're just going to. Oh, is it? You just... get a screen share sound. Oh. Mm -hmm. It's hilarious. You guys are funny. It's fun. You know, I got to let you guys talk more. I'll, I'll try to calm down. No, that's fine. Interrupting is good. Dumpster fire gets more views. So totally. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, all right. So now all I have to do is hit play on this video. During the March equinox. The reciprocal is true during the September equinox. In this case, eclipses must happen from the north to the south. The pass of totality promoted by heliocentrists shows that it <laughs> See, all you okay. had to do, all you had to do is wait because well, obviously didn't, didn't know that was coming up, but then <laughs> how can you explain those curved paths on a flat earth? Oh, it's real simple, but, um, that has to do with sunrise, uh, sunrise set and elevation angles. When the moon's rise set and elevation angles are the same as the uh, sun's at a new moon. That's when we have a solar eclipse. So 
uh, you can path out the areas latitude and longitude wise that will have that type of an anomaly. And the neat thing about uh, these eclipses is check out uh, eclipse shadows, because what they do is they debunk atomism and materialism because the shadows are actually now light instead of a shadow so and eclipses are very special go ahead brother and before we move on from this image i know mr sensible was bringing up the curve past the curve past mr sensible what do you think would happen if i projected this image to your globe sphere what do you think would happen to those curved lines which is something i was going to say then it will appear as a straight line oh exactly. okay moving on <laughs> well wait, that's wait, just so, so you so no, i want to go back to your point no, there our, your our argument actually your argument it. is that we would expect the sh the eclipses to go in the opposite direction they actually do on Wait, the helicentric model. That's your argument, right? Let's go back to the actual argument. So yeah. here you've got um with the orange with line. the path with the path During of the, the March um, equinox. Right. So you're saying the the reciprocal the is eclipse would go from the south to the north if due to the axis accurate. of the planes of the earth and the moon and the sun and the galactic great axis what do they call it the, the great or something I just, I just want to simplify this your argument is is that if this was accurate the eclipse would go from the south to the north yeah at the march equinox right and you think that's the case because the moon is because we can because we can 3d model it because we can 3d model it so if you put the moon in rotation around Earth here, if you have everything dialed in, everything exact, you are going to see the shadow, obviously, because if the moon's path is inclined this direction, it's going to come from the south to the north. And then the reciprocal during the fall equinox, right? Because of the path of the moon now. We go right? back to the other picture. We just stick with one picture at a time. We got so many more though. No, we got it's so the same. Many more. This is yeah, this is right. just I, a September I, I want to explain using the other okay. picture and going back All to right. the other picture. So you think that it's impossible on this situation for the the eclipse to go from the west to the east. That's what you're saying. We're not we're not talking about west and east right now. We're talking about the fact that the totality path would actually have to come from the south to the north. Right. So you're saying it's impossible for the totality path to go from the west to the east. No, I'm talking about it going from the north to the south, not west and east. We already covered that one. What? So what you're saying literally makes no sense now. So what is your argument against the flat earth here? We're not against the flat earth. Or against the heliocentric model, my apologies. What is, <laughs> what is your argument against the heliocentric model in this picture? The argument is that the eclipse would have to come from the south to the north during the march equinox and then we right. have and to so go it's from impossible the north for it to, to go south. from west to east that is you're saying it is impossible we're not for talking the about west and east now we're talking about north and south picture what we're talking about north and south not west and east we already covered that one yeah we're now onto the north south path yeah south north all right so uh, you guys seem stumped let's go to uh the one no, about not time. stumped not stumped you talked okay. about this if this was all 3d model you modeled you can you can uh download one of those um sandbox you know solar system or universe sandbox type things and you could you can fast forward it you can wind it back you will see what we actually see it's and it's not true. what you're showing this is heliocentrism's explanation for why we don't have a lunar or solar eclipse every month that's what we're going through right now this no. is the explanation this is the lunar nodes no we this can we literally a have a 3d nodes. model of the the heliocentric model that we you can play you can press the play button you can watch exactly to scale what these planets do and they map perfectly onto the data i don't know what your argument here is like what <laughs> you you're saying do, that here is you a can't do it to scale that like that right that is there is an scale. absurdity if, yeah how would you do it to scale you have knows, a, <laughs> yeah, you can, your modeling one, program would have to be like 400 miles long if, you guys have no idea what you're one, talking you, about do you scale. not know how computer games work like yes we have a scale yeah. model That's, of the solar system in a computer yeah yeah it's, it's crazy you cannot, you'd have to put the sun in austin the the moon would have to be in like toronto ontario do you not know how <laughs> computers in your work? computer model do you not know how but computers it, work yeah, we it's do. Let's, let's move on so so no we have a computer model of the heliocentric thing where we have the the sun to scale in a computer computer it's digital it's not physical digital to scale model mm -hmm. of the sun 
the moon and the earth and they rotate exactly like how we say they do in the heliocentric model and if you press the play button on the video on the 3d model of what's going on you can see the shadows and where they would go I, and it predicts exactly map on to what we see in reality so does our flat reality too with the andrew marsh website well, no, we well, predict so, and map so everything independent mm -hmm. of the flat reality what your criticism is that if the heliocentric model is true then we would expect to see the shadow going in the opposite direction that it does that's false if the heliocentric model is true we would ex expect it to show up exactly in the way that it does show up and so no, you're missing you that it's wrong the heliocentric model based off of this very simple diagram which is not this, at the all heliocentric scale. model mischaracterizes itself when it claims that you can only have uh eclipses during the equinoxes when we clearly have it happening on the solstices that, the no next claim was that, that the, no the traveling that. motions no of the spin of that. the earth and the moon around the sun would indicate that the shadow would actually travel from the east to the west Right. right. That's and in just March, why, it, in why March, it would only travel the shadow from the south, from the south of the earth to the north. And Jason's put it here with your own model and showed you the fallacy no. and error in it. And all you guys can say is, well, look at this modeling program when we're showing you your own program right here. No, you're using, you're that. using a not I knew you'd be denier, but we definitely have a lot more to show. Let bro, them bro, talk, you're using a not talk. to scale model. So if I showed you a picture of the flat earth that I drew or that uh, Nathan Oakley drew or something and said, ha, you see the whole flat earth model fails because of this one picture Nathan Oakley drew, you'd be like, well, that's weird. I'm not Nathan Oakley. I don't use that picture. That's a very not to scale model, right? You'd want an actually to scale model to represent your position. You wouldn't want to care mischaracterized by a very simplistic model to implement that is only there to express a single point and then trying to use that model to explain everything about the universe doesn't really work very well does it did you really think this argument through very well do the two of you understand what it says here moon too high do you understand what yes. that means okay of course we do do you see when they have it yep yeah, but the solstice is right too high Two hundred thirty-five thousand miles you're talking about scale yes the moon's going to be really too high of course it's only like two thousand miles in in diameter so uh, this is this not a picture of every high. June. This is not a picture of every June throughout history. Yes, it is. No, it's not. It, no, no. It's the solstices. No. And the equinoxes. They don't change. The solstices change. and the equinoxes. The Earth's what, tilt what, what, and orbital what mechanics. What, what, what do you, what do you think the solstice moon, and equinoxes We don't get a new moon is, on the first of every month or, 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 or whatever. It doesn't equate exactly with our calendar months or where we are around the, the sun. How, the, how the, far? The, how the far dates of, a, of the new moon slowly um, go forward or backwards, whichever way it is. How far of a deviation do you have from equinox and solstices what from year to year? How much of a variation june 21st no, uh, or june 22nd right no no i'm not talking about that i'm talking about the actual December 21st phases of the December moon 22nd it, if if you had a new moon on pick a date december the 22nd then next year you will not have a new moon on december the 22nd or, or just at the tail end of it the year mm. after it would be slightly different it's it's a slowly um changing cycle yeah yeah it changes over three months in this therefore cycle. your so diagram does not cover every um it's not my diagram solstice. this is heliocentric this is no, time and because, date because if, if that's june um with your diagram there if that's june the 21st or whatever then the next time the the earth has uh reached that point around its orbit the moon will be in a different position it I won't just, be you don't have a new moon on exactly the same day every year i understand you have to have a new moon near it though and um so lunar node i'm gonna make this real simple for you guys lunar node i took the picture right from here it is there it is <laughs> right what is a total lunar or eclipse i this is the graphic that i that i took and used right, so other ones with dates on they all you have to do is graphic or you need to move on the tilt of the earth yeah so we need to move on they're, they're not understanding the, the argument that's fine that's right. fine so, they can so say here, they disagree and that's it wait, wait here's a website uh, the sky live where it has all of the orbits to scale where you can type in the date and you can show exactly what's going to happen on those dates and we can do that too on a flat plane and the shadows and we can do that one, too you can just put in the date of wherever you want on june and see oh is there an eclipse there 
Yes, Put that in your chat. Yes, I'm gonna. Say, I'm gonna. I'll, I'll save that uh, website and see what anything else I can glean. Cool. We've yeah, got so many, so many things to these. prove. Three D model to scale of solar system, and you zoom in, and then you, you press the mm. play button, and you type in the date, and like, oh, look, there's an eclipse with the Earth and the Moon on June. But you know they no were predicting eclipses long before the heliocentric sphere Earth model even existed, you, you right? Claimed, you claimed <laughs> I mean, you think that an eclipse prediction proves bro, your sphere your bro, your laws? Bro. Bro, your your claim was that this would be impossible on the the heliocentric model. Here here is a literal model of heliocentrism where there's the sun in the middle, there's the earth over here, and there's the moon here. And guess what? You can get eclipses in June in this model, which is heliocentric. Even if you don't believe this this model is correct, this thing in a computer where the sun is in the center can get eclipses in June, which proves your your model wrong it proves that no yes, heliocentrism wrong not our model wrong <laughs> heliocentrism <laughs> states that you can't have those types of eclipses yeah. happening out Here of those nodes you're not looking at does. your own graphic i swear right, we've, we've got we've got one more debunk and then what we you're can, saying it can't do we got one more debunk in this video and then we'll move on now you will notice that the moon is defined as having an orbit that is tilted five degrees to the ecliptic plane that 5 degree tilt is defined to the ecliptic plane, not Earth's 23.5 degree tilt in heliocentrism. As you can see in each of these diagrams, the tilt of the Moon's orbit is contrary to the tilt of Earth in the heliocentrism. So now that you have the lay of the land, let's jump ahead here a little. Equinox and the September equinox being labeled as the nodes. Each of these nodes are the only time eclipses of the Sun and Moon could ever take place. Looking at the diagram, we can see that there are only two possible times this could happen, and that it is at the equinoxes which have been labeled nodes. Let's zoom in on the March node as this will be the easiest to see. In heliocentrism, the Moon must transit in front of the Sun in order for a solar eclipse to take place. Now as we know, in heliocentrism, the Earth is moving 67,000 miles per hour around the Sun, and the Moon is traveling 2,288 miles per hour around Earth. So we see here at the March equinox that Earth is moving 67,000 miles per hour this way, and that the Moon is moving 2,288 miles per hour this way. With Earth having a diameter of less than 8,000 miles, the transit of the shadow would take roughly 6 minutes and 56 seconds at the combined speed of 69,288 miles. Alright, you guys want to test the math? I'm not going to test the math, but what you're forgetting, your diagram is showing uh, the orbital inclination of the moon at, at one um, at one, one angle is the wrong word, but, but for instance on the can you just go back so you can see the diagram without that that mm -hmm. maths thing over the top? Yeah. So you've got you, you've got uh, I mean, sort of center top of the picture where you've got the sixty seven thousand miles an hour. You've, you're showing the orbital tilt of the moon um, at a certain angle uh, as opposed to uh, the plane of the ecliptic. Yes. That processes it changes it cycles over about eighteen and a bit years. So what is true in that diagram today? won't be true next year or the year after or the year after that and how far do you propose that you think it's going to drift up or down no it's processing okay like how far do you predict that it will process north or south of that path on its ecliptic orbit no it, it, the moon will will remain at the same um uh, orbital inclination uh, to, uh as opposed to the earth's orbital uh plane but the the direction of, of if imagine it like a spinning top changes it processes right now um you've got the inclination leaning that way but in uh however many years it's leaning that way yeah so I read it, an article it. it said humans are causing the earth to wobble more <laughs> in climate change right we actually we actually understand that uh 19 year cycle with the moon and what it's talking about is so like the the farthest it travels north with the sun we talk about the tropics being the farthest that it travels north or south with the moon it has a wider path that it travels between and it goes through a cycle where it has its most northern the farthest that it'll travel to the north farthest travel to the south and it is a 19 year cycle we we get and understand all that but that 
that's not ex explaining in a way the debunk of heliocentrism right here because what we're talking about is combining the speeds because they're opposing each other right and then the mass what it's going to tell us is that the length of time that it would take for the shadow to go across the face of earth is 6.9 minutes right because one's 8,000 miles in diameter and the other one's 2,000 miles in diameter and then you combine those speeds and so under seven minutes is the length of transit of the shadow in heliocentrism over, simple, over simple a mass. point over a point so if you're stood uh, stood there watching um a, an eclipse then I, I i can't remember the exact figure but the maximum length of, of eclipse you could see is about seven minutes i think something like that seven and a half minutes i've, I've got um, the information but the actual here. eclipse from when it starts to when it ends can be several hours that's that's exactly what i the point i make so um right here the record oh there we go seven minutes 32 not bad eh from the top of my yes. head no good job um so we're talking about totality now right mm -hmm. totality yep. Yep. not the duration of the eclipse that's right totality for totality an for an observer yes yeah. so this graphic right here shows the duration of the eclipse and this one shows the length of totality all right and you'll see that across the face of earth took over five hours so the first debunk of heliocentrism here is that the length of solar eclipses that we record and witness are much too long for the heliocentric model but you just debunked yourself no Play, uh, takes... go back halfway back there, there stop there you can see that totality is that little black spot in the minute in this in the middle that passes over an area that takes a ma maximum time of as we saw seven minutes 32. the wider penumbra where you see a partial eclipse will will uh, last longer but the actual eclipse as a whole from start to finish as it is traveled across the face of the earth could be several hours that's not a problem no it is because all we have to do is go back to the graphic and um the math of your orbital mechanics on your spinning earth and your spinning moon opposing longest, each other <laughs> the longest the shadow could be cast across earth is under seven minutes because of the speed of the moon and the speed of earth all right that's the longest under seven minutes because of the speed of these two things and the sizes we've the mass are there nobody can nobody can deny this you would all eclipses would have to be less than seven minutes yet no, we have dumb. totality in the range of seven minutes no that's dumb well you guys have to take away all the movement and measurements and say that everything is relative to make it work no, no, like we, we can flip the total very, very totality easy. to the duration totality I mean, this is very easy to prove wrong like you could make a computer model that has all the same numbers that we use press the play button and just count how long does it take it's very very easy like this has been done this has been done to death to prove you wrong a million times like literally this is the easiest claim to prove wrong of probably all of yours because all you have to do is make a computer model doesn't you don't have to think it's real just say make a computer model that has all the numbers that nasa uses press the play button use a stopwatch problem solved like like literally this is very easy you do, do you do understand that these numbers are at a scale that uh, there is no possible way to show any representation of it you could if you made something the size of a pixel you would need to have uh, a tv screen the size of a football stadium in order to be able that's to not how computers work jason we're talking about yes, true scale no, no, like you, can, you, can, scroll, you scale. can zoom in you can zoom in to looking at the moon and the sun or so, just but when we shadow. zoom in you tell us that it's not valid now you're telling us we need to zoom out you're flip-flopping we got to move on you got so much no, no, more information you, we can you, accept you, that you don't agree with our premise and we can move on so you can make a model in a computer that obeys rules and you press the play button you watch it you can make a model do anything like these, what are you they, talking well, about? Would like we're showing you your wait, model, wait, wait, and this, we're this, showing this you how not, it's debunked. It's not hard to understand. You if can't come back possible, with. We can model it to make wait, it work. Wait, I can make a, a Mobius infinite your Earth. Your argument. Work. Can, wait, stop, stop, Bernie. So your argument is, is it, this is impossible on a heliocentric model? Which means, if in a computer I can make a heliocentric model where this happens, that proves you wrong. All right, provide it, provide it to us, provide There's it. Lots of, said, I already did. I did earlier. I literally gave you an example of one earlier. There's lots of these. These exist. Like, just oh, we'll go further, to we'll further check out your website. Send us, send us, send us the link. Common. We'll check these it out. Extremely common. 
And if we're moving off from this, what I would like to see model is... But then all we need to use is Stellarium. And you guys are going to say debunked, right? I don't know what that is. Why let's, even let's, go to... Yeah, Stellarium, use that. Right, but yeah. what, what I would say is, how the hell can you explain an eclipse over a flat Earth? Yeah, I've got a video that does it. I bet you have. <laughs> yeah, keep moving on, keep moving on. Let's, let's keep going. So, this was just the intro. Yeah, this oh, was... Oh, gosh. Yeah, this was uh, when we debated Red's rhetoric Space and Sean Engine. Hufford. They were absolutely unable to respond to any of these. Let's see if you guys can do any better. So this was one of the globe debunks that we used. Right, then. Just to clarify, uh, for Earth to run a link in the chat, there's this. There's one called Space Engine. It does all of this for you. You just download it. You press the play button. You can do all the calculations. You can zoom in, see exactly what it does. You can count it. Use a stopwatch, see exactly how long it takes for all of these things. And we know even, how to test even if you don't believe this is true, the fact that this model exists and shows that the exact time that it would take for the eclipse to happen and it doesn't correspond to your numbers proves you wrong that a heliocentric model can't account for this because that literally is a heliocentric model in a computer program that does account for this we'll test it so check this out space rotate engine, space with the motions org. defined by heliocentrism we could feel acceleration and deceleration as demonstrated in this experiment not only do we not feel nor can we measure any acceleration and deceleration but Aries failed to detect any movement of earth whatsoever we demand the defendants provide measurable repeatable repeatable evidence for the acceleration deceleration and movement of earth without you guys see what's going on here uh, well, we do. We do feel that those. those what are the what are the arms called? Foucault, Foucault, Foucault pendulum, pendulums. They exist. There you go. It's, it's not Foucault pendulum. No, but what, what did you talk about? The fact that as we're supposedly um, turning around the Earth, sometimes we're going with the orbit of the Earth, sometimes against it. So our speed is north. changing. Is that what you're saying? So, so what this so, is is a demonstration of two motions of of rotation. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Yeah, it's got a marker right here that it draws on a pane of glass as it's traveling by. So they've got the wheel rotating here and traveling in a linear path, which would be mimicking Earth's rotation, right? Yep. Okay. All right. So this is, this is you could put an accelerometer onto this tip of this uh, marker right here. And it's going to measure what? How can we measure acceleration any acceleration and, and deceleration, deceleration? But Aries... See, because it comes to a full stop and then turns back upon itself. So if you were to put a marker... It, 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 we, we, I know what you're saying. So if that, that wheel going along is the Earth, uh, you are the marker pen. Mm -hmm. Then as you're uh, orbiting the sun, you're going at one speed and you're slowing down to an almost stop. And yeah, that, that's, that's a straw man. Uh, no, we, it's you, physical, uh, no. repeatable, observable evidence. You can't throw a straw yeah. man without an actual backer to that. We're showing you what something does when it's spinning in two different directions. Yeah, you're too. What you can't spinning. straw man that. A straw man would well, be well, us I trying mean, to. You're going to let me explain. Go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, that's all right. Um, like we said before, I know we'll talk over each other from mm. time to time. That's fine. I know there's no nastiness or anything. Um, you are sat on the Earth. Uh, you are held there with gravitational attraction. You are. I mean, we've got those arcs there that the humps, as, as, as that uh, demonstration was traveling along, it takes us 24 hours to uh, make a full rotation. And what, uh, what we, is the speed? We are sorry. What is the speed of a person? Let's say this is a, yeah? a record. I can tell you the speed. Of... Equator. One revolution equator. per day. But how, how uh, fast is it moving point, at the uh, equator? Uh, no, in miles, no, in no, miles no, per nine hour. Four RPM. How fast is it moving at the equator? It doesn't matter. Uh, you're confusing angular. Wait, 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 wait. You're confusing a angular thousand momentum. Miles per hour one sec, one sec. at the equator. You're, wait, stop, stop. So you're confusing angular momentum and angular change versus straight directional momentum. Those, no confusion. Those are different things. Angular so like, velocity. Like this, the, so the you, line thing is us, you right? Have, the, the line is talk. supposed to be, the marker is supposed to be us, and the rotating thing is supposed to be Earth. And relative to the sun... We hit a point that's closest to the sun, and then the Earth keeps going. We're not talking we... about the sun. This is about the Earth's motion. Nothing around, to do with the sun. That's what sure this sun. demonstration is showing. Yeah, so if you have a record, sun, right? uh, one of those 33 records, a nice big record, right? It, it's rotating at 33 revolutions per minute, correct? 
So if you measure close to the, the center stem, right, it's going to be rotating very slow, but on the outside edge, it's going to be rotating very fast. So angular no, it's rotating velocity. exactly the same speed, 33 <laughs> revolutions per minute. So why no, do people we're, want we're the talking, inside of a racetrack? Why do they not wanna, take the outside? We want to talk about the miles per hour around the outside. I know you not, do, but it's meaningless. What? No, no this, <laughs> you know, your one revolution per day is meaningless. Yes, no, that's nonsensical Nelson, thought experiments like Isaac Newton thought he could shoot a cannonball up into the air and it would just circle the earth forever. That's meaningless. What we're yeah, showing you is the actual you. measurable, repeatable evidence of what would take place if the earth were spinning and moving forward in direction. You can't nullify okay. it with saying straw man or any other fallacy. You have to accept this as actual proof of evidence of what takes place when you have two different motions. You have a rotation plus a forward motion. We're showing yeah, you that there would be an acceleration and deceleration. There's no way around it. In relation right. to your your path around the sun. Not into any relation about the sun. This is talking about an object spinning no, and moving forward. Take the sun out of this, I said. This oh, my God, Ronnie, Ronnie, we're just using the sun on the screen. I do not Ronnie, see a sun Ronnie, in this picture. Ronnie, this Ronnie. is the... Yeah, right. I Ronnie, understand. Ronnie, you're just saying, like, if you were traveling through space on a spinning Earth, like, so the sun, we're, we're, we happen to be tra traveling on the sun. It's irrelevant to our argument. So, yes. So, if the sun, if the Earth was rotating, just spinning through space, not around anything that's that's the argument okay fine yes what is the angular rate of change in that speed well yeah. you would notice is as you went and you would slow down to a complete stop and then you would be accelerated forward again through the arc it's showing you literally on the screen oh, and this is like 60 old, years old Lord. but you just, just said look. you would slow down in relation yes. to look what? at the drawing Listen, look hold, at the hold on, hold on. Ronnie Ronnie you're sat in your chair for 24 hours okay so what you're saying is you'll have sped up at one point slowed down at another point in relation to what your chair hasn't moved it's still sat in the middle of your living room in relation to that's what I said the sun you could be traveling in a path that orbit uh, uh with, with a radius of 93 million miles takes us a year to go round. If, if if you actually had a traced line where it is and looked along it, it would look dead straight it's big so so again you're taking things to size comparisons like neil degrasse Tyson. See, of course you wouldn't see how big you're a tiny sand grain of sand on a beach ball no this is all nonsense what we're showing you is the two motions of movement for a rotating forward directing object has acceleration and deceleration and none of these things have ever been measured just like my chair isn't going to move if i don't move it because earth is motionless and we can test it and repeat it and we can go out and show it that's what we said we were going to do so with an accelerometer on on the tip of this thing right here it would be showing coming to a full stop and then going forward again no coming to a full with, stop and your then accelerometer going again. is on the surface of the earth it, it so it, if you placed it on the on the table sat it on uh, or ronnie's holding it sat in his chair as i was saying then his movement is constant at one revolution per 23 hours 56 minutes or whatever it well, is we're, sh we're showing people that have uh, the ability to just look at this video that what you're saying yes. isn't true it comes to okay a okay stop. now listen it uh, relative is critical just wind that that video just about halfway so that, that wheels uh in what do you mean by relative what well, do you I'll mean explain. Clarify. I'll explain right right so so now what we've got is we are sat still that wheel is traveling past us relative to us if we were on a camera that was on an arm looking straight at that wheel all we would see is that and all that would change is our perspective and parallax to the spinning moving wheel the spinning moving wheel is no, showing no, us parallax. exactly no, what it is and what it's doing you can't say that if we were moving down everything that you're what interjecting you're at, here is, is is just that, taking away from the in simple obvious logic understanding of what jason's showing if you guys could just say that you understand what we're showing we could just move. Wait, wait, yeah yeah so, so i understand so if we put let, let's that say that we the, spin the camera the let's say that we're spinning really, the camera and we put an accelerometer just on the table would the, the accelerometer um, how do you want us in the camera i don't understand suppose i'm holding the camera and spinning the, the, the hand and spinning to, to make it look like that, that, that wheel that then, pattern. then let's put the accelerometer on the camera and we'll no, 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 measure, no, no. So, we'll so measure say, the motion of the camera analogy. stick with my analogy jason so my analogy is i'm spinning the camera and the accelerometer is on the table will the accelerometer measure anything if the accelerators, uh, if it's on the table, it will not measure anything because Earth is not moving. It's fixed. And that's no, how no, all no, the no, devices no. that we Relative measure things off of actually Relative work. to the camera. So the camera's spinning to make it look like that image. Then, the then, you, put the the you, then you put the accelerometer on the so camera how, to see what motion here, you're applying to that. Right? T-Jump, how many miles an hour is your car going when it's in park? <laughs> A lot. Is it? It's going 1,000 miles an hour at the equator, huh? But yeah. even though you're measuring device logical in 
rate in reality says it's moving zero miles an hour. Right. Right? It is moving so zero in relation to the surface of the Earth. All that is nonsensical thought experiment. We are going to show you verifiable, researchable, testable, repeatable evidences that we can go out and actually visual. We've got clouds behind the sun to get to. Uh, now we're going to go into curvature. Okay, mm -hmm. let's go to curvature. <laughs> <laughs> so what you're seeing here is uh, one of my first videos that I ever did. This is, um, this is from like early 2016. So it was my first flat earth proof video. And so it just so happened that I lived on a river here in Austin that um, we had a big flood. And so I paid really close attention to what sea level was and how many feet above sea level we were because we were on, uh, on the river where it flooded. So this right here is a, a study of my situation. Now, the first thing we got to do is, um, this is how that would look. we got to agree on the curvature formula real quick, guys. Go on and tell us if, what it is. Do you understand that eight inches per mile squared does not give you enough curvature? It doesn't give you a curve at all. It gives you a parabola. Well, it gives you a slope. It's right here. No, no, no that's a straight line. It's a slope. It gives you so a parabola. Uh, when the squared, the eight inches per mile squared means it goes up exponentially. It's, it would be a parabola. It wouldn't be a line. But I, I, I'll grant you that at relatively short distances, it can give you a rough guide. Right? Right, it's should, not too bad, it should. but it doesn't give you enough curvature for it to work for heliocentrism. Right, it comes way short. Have we got that? Well, uh, to be honest, most flat earthers say the other thing, and they'll go on about however far out you go, and then it's an infinite or virtually an infinite drop because it's a parabola. Yeah, it comes up. It comes up way short if you actually test it. Well, it's, um, it's a meaning. It's a meaningless thing, but I know a lot of flat earthers use eight inches per mile squared. But uh, we're just gonna. We're going to use it for rough means. You agreed that it sort of works in a rough way. For so short distance, yeah. Here's the premise. Um, my place on the river was 140 miles from the coast here in Texas. And um, so what I did is I modeled this up. And what we, we got here. The is, what we got here is at 143 miles, the total curvature would be 13,632 feet, all right? But I was 400 feet above sea level, right? So I subtracted that out. So we've got 13,232 feet of drop that we should have from the mouth of the river to my house, all right? So all you have to do is have the observer positioned right here where the river flows into the larger body of water. And from this observer's vantage, if they look back towards my house, right? My house would have to be 1,300, 200 feet no. below. Yes, yes, because everybody places themselves so, at the top hold, of the globe. Oh, my goodness. Always. You're not you're not going to, um, oh, what's his name, Tenth Man's Alice and Bob proof, are you? We don't know who that is. No, never heard of him. Oh, right. So you've got that lady there. She's looking to the, to the left mm -hmm. and can see that the horizon has dropped. You put Bob at that end. He looks to the right. But she's dropped. So why isn't it curving like this? Is that what, where you're going? No, no. The, like the goodness fact for is, for the person. So if you're that, just talking about the fact that the uh, what, what are you saying? Uh, your elevation at your house was about 400 feet. Was that what you're saying? 400 feet above sea level. Okay, yes. 400 feet above sea level. The uh, I don't know how far from the sea it is. 143 miles. It's all okay. under half here. Right. So that all that means is from that start point of your house to the mouth of the river, there is a drop of 400 feet that's all the drop is do you not get that the surface yeah, is curved for... uh, your 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 house is 400 foot roughly further from the center of the earth than the mouth of the river is yeah so uh, this is rivers just don't flow bit... because of the curve of the earth they flow, flow purely due to elevation yeah well rivers wouldn't work on a globe and Why? this right here is the demonstration of that yeah, no, so what's the problem that. with the image? I don't see the problem. You don't see the problem. So the observer right here that's at the mouth, that, like uh, Mr. Sensible is saying, we know that there has to be 400 feet of elevation drop for the water to move from the back of my house into this body of water up here, right? There has to be that elevation what? drop. But yet, you don't believe that there has to be elevation drop? Wait, wait, so, so your argument is that... There has to be elevation drop. That's not curvature. If wait, you so, so you're saying that water can't... Go from your house to the river or something? Is that your argument? 
on a curve. I think where he's coming from, Tom, is if you had a perfectly smooth ball, uh, Jason, mm. the elevation is, is, is like you stuck something on the outside of that ball. So it's flowing from the highest point, the furthest point from the center of the ball, back to the surface of the ball, mean sea level. That's all it is. It's got nothing to do with sea the level. Curve. I like that. Can I show a meme? Can I interject? Yeah. Uh, let good. me take so, stop screen sharing. I'll screen share real quick. Let's see if this works. I'm trying to do this so that everybody can see. So you guys should be able to see here. We're starting off with the Nile. Right? Oh is it God. clear? Ryan, That's the same the thing Nile. he's talking about. So a river that flows north over 4,000 miles against the supposed curve of the globe sphere Earth. The impossibility of this further proves Earth is actually flat and water always flows downhill to what? Find its sea level. You can be in denial when you can't accept this fact and choose to believe that you live on a giant spinning sphere. Did you guys want to comment before I move on to the next? Yes, proof? yes. Ronnie, I, Go don't ahead, wish please. To, I, I, don't, I really don't wish to be rude, but that meme is dumb. Uh, I mean, the, the, the difference between the mouth of the Nile from the source of the, the Nile could just be a couple of feet. It doesn't matter the length of it. The water is going to flow from the higher point to the lower point around a curve because it's not going over a hump or anything. It's not running down the curve or trying to run up a curve. It's going around a curve. Around a curve. That's what you say. Well, let's go on to a little bit more evidence to help you understand what I'm trying to say. How about the Suez Canal? Earth is definitely right. flat. It's a 120 mile long canal, right? Yep. Sea level waterway located in Egypt and connects the Mediterranean Sea with the Gulf of Suez with actual zero curvature allowance in its construction. And the next meme I have right here is an well, actual well, well, diagram well, 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 of well, the elevation well, map showing well, that it's perfectly level for over a hundred miles. And guess what? The kicker of this is, wait one second, Mr. Sensible. Yep. There are no lift locks in this dealing with the supposed, do you understand that that's 9,604 feet of curvature missing? That's not curvature. It's the same level from one end to the other. Can't tell me that it's Earth is flat. Hold on, it hold on. I wait for you, Ronnie. I wait for you. That they that. Sorry, I forgot what I was saying. It's level from one end to the other. Therefore, it doesn't need locks to lift or or lower boats. You're it's saying the curvel. Same level. You're using the word curvel, like curves are somehow level. No, it's absolutely flat, and you can see right here on the dry, the diagram of the elevation map that I have right here, there is no locks. And look, it even is scalable. This is actually an elevation map that you can measure. It goes from this section all yes. the way to this section flat. Uh, what's, what's the elevation at one end, Ronnie? Sea level. What's the, elevation level. At the, what's the elevation sea level. at the other end, Ronnie? Sea level. If there wasn't yes. a sea level yeah. elevation, yeah, there was not going up, It's not going down. It's maintaining the same right. level. And there's not a water hump. And there's no, no humps. No, 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 no. What do you mean? Mm. There is no... There's no way you guys can deny or, or take this away. Let me do a couple more and then I'm going to send it back to Jason. We got a bunch more here. Let's look at this. Wait, let's wait, wait. No, no, let's, no. Go back, go back, go back, go back. So, so when it says level, okay. as in like sea level, uh, sea level. If, if we're on a curve, the sea level is going to be curved, right? It's you're calling it curvel, curvel, not, right. not level. You're calling it curvel. Let's get this right. Curve, curve. So everybody in the audience can understand your Cur oh, oh, non-reality mind it's control curve tricks level. that you're trying yes. to pull. Curvel, level curve. on a sure, flat plane sure, in a sure. simulation reality like we teach, or curvel like it would be on a sphere. So we wouldn't picture. say things were sea level. We would say it was sea curvel. Just right. get the so, terminology so if, right. If we're on a curvel, say if we're on a, a curvel, curve okay. or whatever you want to call it, mm -hmm. I wouldn't need any sea gates to go up and down like a thousand miles. Yes, right? you would. How do you know how the right. properties of water work? They find their level, which is sea level. They don't flow up hills or down hills. Ronnie, if you can what, show what a is... diagram of a spinning sphere with water clung to it or any, any oh, experiment at all where you can show me water flowing upwards in elevation, show me. Show it's me. not flowing it's evaporation. Out. Are we going to talk about being a gas? Let's let's stick to the actual picture on the from? screen right here. This is a hundred miles with zero curvature, zero locks, and there's missing nine thousand six hundred and four feet of curvature. It's show it's showing zero changes in elevation. Yes, That's that means that it's flat. Do you see no, a curve doesn't. in this map? Do you see a curve? Well, so no, you're telling me that when they designed this and built this, they measured to the center of the earth and then they ran a string. No, and they did no, a, you a don't need to. 
What, no, what you're Nixon. suggesting is absolutely crazy because they actually use the water to level it because water yes. always finds its level. Yes. Let's look at this picture. So if you're claiming that we live in a curve L, let's look at a real life experiment here. Someone's taken a mirror and they've shined a light on it and they've put a curve onto it because you say we live on a curve L. This is what it would look like. Look at this surface, which is flat. And which which does the real life picture match for you guys? Does it look like we live on a curve L? Do you see a, a spotlight out here on the water or do you see the light fully extending all the way to the observer i have no idea what i'm looking at right now okay i'll explain it again at the top of the screen we have a curved surface with a flashlight being shown onto it shined in this one we have a flat surface with that same flashlight being shined onto it and below we actually have an observation of the sun pointing at an observer what do you think this observation matches your curve L theory over here well, on the left scale with will make will make a difference but Ronnie, i cannot no, you cannot you talk about scale you, we're showing you an actual yes. observe observation of a picture taken of earth i'm not telling you right. to imagine how yes, far but you're comparing it to, to, to two bits of, of glass wet, wet glass or whatever but but ronnie the big thing is what you're not grasping right mm -hmm. is there is a difference between elevation no what you're not yes, grasping is it doesn't matter how big this curve is if you shine a light on a curved surface you get a spotlight no, effect no, you, you don't can model this in any Ronnie. 3d modeling program when you shine it on a flat surface you have this and you know what here this is what you guys want to do all the globe earther kabbalistic heliocentrics do is take you to thought experiments all your proof is going to be in these squiggly lines when what we're continuing to do and will continue to do forever is show you observable repeatable measurable evidences Jason, By ignoring you the, the screen share evidence. back there just they're just not, not, not responding correctly. I mean, I, c I can show you a picture of a curved, uh, well, sorry, uh, of a, a tank of water that has a curved surface. Have you ever heard of tow tanks? I, I can, we can go into all the stuff. We can put salt in the water and sugar no, and no, the no, lights no, no, bounce. No. So we can do all this. Surface. I want to look at actual physical reality observations yes, yes. that we can all go from out and university. do. That's what we said from the beginning. And we're going to be sticking to that forever. Can I share, share photo? Uh, what do you need to share? Because I, I'm ready to, to yeah. keep moving. You're on yeah, to perspective know, but, but now. Like to, we we, we like haven't gotten a chance to respond to what Ronnie had said yet. So we, we yeah. still need a chance okay, to respond ahead. to what Ronnie said. And make Thank sure you. you guys are super chatting over on T Jump's channel. We yes. want the good super chat questions. I'm really looking. But we still have what? Jason, you still got. We want to talk about what else do you want to talk about? Then we'll get to your responses. Jason, like, give us a blow through. You wanted to go into perspective. You've got a, uh, what else do you have? Wait, 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 no, we, we, still, we still need a chance to respond to the gibberish you just said about. I was giving you a little bit of time to come up with your response. I was talking to give oh, you that time. Well, but if you're ready, go ahead. I'll mute. Yeah, so can you, can you see that done. image? Yes. Can you see that image? Well, so I just want to say that if I take a flashlight, put it on top of a basketball, it'll create a long line. It won't just create a little dot. <laughs> well, yeah, you're taking it to a crazy, nonsensical straw man, non-reality. I showed no, you, you a picture of a ball. surface you reflecting light. If I shine a light on any you, ball, will it create a you line? You can yes. zoom into a... Uh, <laughs> you guys just taking it to nonsense realities. I showed well, you the evidence. Well, you said that, Ronnie. Hey, uh, you can see that picture of that tank of water here. I can see that, yes. Yeah, that's a tow tank. Uh, the, the construction that's across it is the gantry, which runs on those rails. The tank is used to uh, model ships, how they handle waves and so on. Uh, when that tank was built, it's at Southampton University. It's a Boulderwood tow tank. It's 138 metres long. Those rails have to be perfectly even height above the surface of the water. I know it's showing waves in it right now, but they let the water settle. The, the, these rails are set so at the same height above the water so it doesn't affect the gantry and affect all the readings. From one end to the other, there is a curve, a hump, in the middle of 0.6 millimetres over a length of 138 uh, metres. All those red mountings had to be adjusted using a microscope and a pin touching the surface of the water. And as I said, it's a curve. That, that was measured against the water. That's the amount of curvature you get in a 138 meters uh, long tank uh, at the latitude of uh, Southampton University. That's that, that's measured. There is curve, but the surface of the water is always level. The gantry, where did you measure the, the curve? Where? What was the curve measured on again? The, Sorry, the water. They adjust the rails so the top of the rail is exact same distance above uh, the uh, water. Yeah, do you understand? So we're uh, making so waves and we're no, no, measuring no, this flat. The, it's flat. Oh, right. It's flat. Oh, it's yeah. flat. Here you no. go. H have a look at this. Forget the waves. There's the tank and it's Ooh. still 
and there, there's a gantry running across. That gantry must not move up or down. Those rails must be the same uh, distance above the surface. You can see they, they do have a wave machine for testing the models of the ships. That rail, or the rails on each side, have a curve of 0.6 millimetres over the length, because that's all the curvature is, over 138 meters so you're taking now, it to a scale but wait a second why is it then in your heliocentric model that the wave or hump of the earth spinning would actually be larger than mount everest how come nobody's ever filmed or viewed or or uh, observed this giant hump of of curvature that would be demanded with the spinning the spirit? let's let's spin your pool here a thousand miles an hour at the equator and watch what happens to it it's just nonsensical what you just tried to do you there do, you do you in no way showed me evidence get, that i lived on a sphere now i if you could yeah. show me evidence if you could, we're going to get back to Jason's point, but if you could, like, maybe we'll do another podcast. You could come we forth with to, evidence yeah. to prove the sphere Earth with curvature, with measurements of Earth's rotation and everything else. I would be really interested to hear your well, side of it, but we're, we're today we're here in Jason's side. What's this just, giant yeah, hump I thing? Have just show, shown, I have just shown uh, a tank which is measurably uh, having to conform, or the rails measurably have to conform to the curve of the water, which is conforming. But no other bridge, to the curve railroad, the or anything ever Earth built in construction has ever had to take this into account. Drill, drilling holes into the earth, all these tunnels, none of them take this your your demanded tank curvature into account. I don't uh, actually, they do. It, they just recently built new underground really? lines uh, under uh, 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 the streets of London, uh, and they had to be very careful to make sure they. Um, that they did. <laughs> and they had to take the curve of the earth into account but what you're not did understanding they use water about to measure water, the curve of the earth though right? you're not they're going to use a water level to water ronnie, level, ronnie, can ronnie we all talk to what you're not understanding about water level ronnie is water sits at a level where where it maintains the same gravitational equipotential so are we going to go to Cavendish's lead balls hanging in his shed for you to explain to me the weight and how gravity works? Or are you just going to make me want to believe that somehow water is being stuck? Do you know how heavy water is? I'm going to throw it back to you, Jay. All right. So we're moving on to perspective now. Uh, I've got Wait, this video what, called... What, what, what's this bulge thing? Bunks. You mentioned the bulge around the earth. What was the bulge thing? What bulge? Uh, talking, that would about, be... uh, talking about the, the water should bulge outward due to the rotation of the earth, as does the earth. And it does, Ronnie. But that bulge isn't suddenly just at the equator. It starts at the north and south well, pole. If the earth was the spinning bulge... in the equator as its middle axis, yes. The, the, the mountain no, Everest no, no. of water would Ronnie, be at Ronnie, the Ronnie, let him finish. Ronnie, Ronnie, let him finish. Ronnie, let him finish. Yeah. If you had a, the, a model of the earth as a beach ball about a meter across and squished it for the, 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 the to allow for the, the bulge, that's, uh, uh, I forget, some 0.3 millimeter bulge. That bulge doesn't suddenly occur at the equator. It's a bulge starting from the pole, coming out to the equator and back again. It's 26 miles, 26 miles over the entire diameter of the Earth. It's minuscule. All right, so moving on to perspective. This is one of the things that uh, heliocentrists like to give flat earthers a hard time about they ask about the ships going out and how that's not proof of curvature well what we did is we set out to prove that that happens on a flat plane so in this video i actually paid a model to walk down a hallway in a mall where it was air conditioned space on carpeting and um, so all the the environmental factors there wasn't humidity there wasn't uh, any of these other types of defects it's in a two-story mall here in austin that the mall is built flat the the mall is actually not curved and um we're builders we understand how things are built flat so here you were talking about elevation mr sensible and uh here i am filming with the camera at the floor and i also film with the camera up at eye height and lo and behold when um is this like model... a video or is it just like a picture no it's a video and it was live streamed all right and so what are we looking at you were looking at a model at the other end of the mall the white where... leg white dress lady mm -hmm. yeah All it's right. gonna and what's the problem yeah what's the problem she's, she's disappearing and you can, you can she's see she's disappearing kind of the guy at the orange pants oh, but i don't know <laughs> just wait you're you're not screen sharing the that specific link you're actually screen oh, sharing no. the lbs scene it's fine we people can see yeah, what we, we got see. What, what it was we're not trying to hide anything we're we're all about no, coming no. out into the light we don't but try you to could hide see a reflection of that woman but you could see a reflection yeah of that a little bit of film. interesting stuff starts to take place let's let's all tune in and pay rate close attention to this okay right i see legs 
let's see, orange. orange so we pants. don't need the music, do we? No. No, the, the, I, d- yeah. I didn't see anything. Wait. I saw a guy walking wait, in front of just us. Just wait. I just showed we you. We just the started ca- it. I just showed you the camera on the um, on the ground. Well, show us the money shot. Yeah, camera right. on the ground. Pants. She asked what I was doing. And look, and, you've um, got you've got all sorts of. Mute the sound. Mute the sound. Mute the sound. No, we don't need the, the sound. Yeah, you, what you're noticing is that you can't see her feet. Let's let. Can no, we but all you agree can see on reflections can we all agree? due to density Hang on. changes. Do you, Mr. Yeah. Sensible, agree that yes. you cannot, cannot see, see her the bottom feet. of her shoes? I agree. Okay, thank. You. Yeah. And the problem with that That's is it. what perspective in your vanishing. She's beyond point. the vanishing point. No, she's from perspective, that, perspective point. isn't from that that point. The camera has its own vanishing point, and she's about to cross back into it. Yes, she's. Mm-hmm. And yeah, but you can see reflections. That's due to. We're not um, talking about the waves of reflections yes, that you're seeing. We're talking about. Can you no, not see her... distortion? <laughs> mm-hmm. Just wait. And what the do you see doesn't... when you see ships and things on the horizon? You see this exact same distortion as well you as. You can see steering... distortion, but you can see some. It matches collisions. reality perfectly. You can go out and retest this. All you have to do is find a long enough hallway in a mall. And if you want, take a laser level there and make sure you verify that all these different spots are perfectly level. And what you'll see is once she crosses the camera's vanishing point, you do not see the feet and she begins to be truncated from the bottom up until if this was a large enough mall, you would cease to see her again, roughly around three miles out. And this proves and that what ships over things, the horizon things and everything disappear, things disappear from the bottom up on a plane due to perspective. No, that's that's due to distortion. You could see the reflections <laughs> that like, well, that's what it is. I mean, the it's, camera, it's, it's mirror. The camera is sitting that? on the floor. Level. I mean, that's a clear shot there, but you can you can see the wheels of that buggy that are further away. It's not a yeah. limit of the camera. No, it's the limit of the camera's circle of sight because it causes what we have in reality is a, a, a vanishing point, right? In all realities, in all video games, you'll have a vanishing point. Once something reaches that, you will not see it anymore as it continues away from you. Yeah. You can yeah, actually that... see at the middle of the mall when she starts walking out of the haze and... and... Haze, exactly. Yeah. May yeah, I look share at, an image? Look at the baseboard and... Yeah. This is this is a black rubber baseboard that's typical in commercial buildings and all distorted. Yeah, absolutely. There are temperature variations. I know you say it's air and that it may be little, but at that distance and at that angle, the instant rays, uh, the instant pass of the rays of light is enough. You do it. understand that other people that don't believe in the same thing as you see this as actual physical evidence of how things are disappearing at the vanishing point. In reality, you guys can state whatever that you believe due to your pre-programmed indoctrination bias, but people that are watching this, Mr. Sensible, are starting to understand that as a person or a car or a vehicle or anything else moves away from you, it crosses what is called the vanishing point. And okay. this is the reason can why I we... Show- we Sorry, see go. ships and, and other things disappear from the bottom up. As we, we drive towards something like the CN Tower, you will begin to see the top of the tower first. And as you move closer, you will see further and further and further until you're within the complete circle of sight of the CN Tower. You will see the whole thing base to the top. And this is all repeatable, measurable, and observable on a flat plane. And, but, you know, we're just talking about the floor of this reality. We, we actually want to take quick? this into the luminaries and the heavenly understandings of things that we see in the sky. Because most flat earthers, they just talk nonsense they deny the observations we also want to take it up a notch this is just we're completely explaining what jason's is showing the vanishing point and the go ahead i was gonna say if you want to take it up a notch uh, i have an image i'd like to explain oh and also just a quick question brenda asked what is the circle of sight the distance that you can see into your vanishing point is your circle of sight it travels around you in a 360 degree perspective well may i may i show you this image and then you can explain it sure Okay. Is it going to be, what is the perspective that uh, Sly Sparkane and all them like to use, Jason, that you always laugh at, the non-reality perspective image, right? Well, there you go. There's an image. Yes, this due, is a if, great example. Yes, well, would you let me explain something? If sure. that's due to your circle of sight yes. hiding the hull, how come you can still see the rigging? So the top is the of the map, hang on, let me. Hold on. Which is the same distance away, but mm-hmm. it's really, really narrow. Let, yet you can, can still I see it. So, and no matter how much you zoom, you will not. Yeah, see that you'll part. never. Okay, the zooming in thing I'll touch on really quick before I answer you. 
heliocentric model and people that believe in NASA believe that you guys can zoom into the outer reaches of the universe. It's absolutely dog do nonsense. We can only see what's in our three to four to six to 10 mile circle of sight. Jason's going to bring up the furthest sighted thing that we could see is 80 miles. The reason that you can see the mass top is because due to your elevation inside this three dimensional virtual reality that the floor of it actually is flat, the sea level is level. The mast, the higher in elevation you are, the larger of circle of sight you have, as well as you can be seen from. So the so reason why you see the mast yeah. last is because as that ship continues to sail away from you, the, the vanishing point will continue to move up as the ship moves away. No, nothing is moving up. The ship is moving beyond your vanishing point, and the top of the mast actually has the largest circle of sight. Therefore, it is seen for the largest amount of viewable time. So what section and all you would have to do, one more point, all you would have to do is rise in elevation and what you would see is completely flatness from our perspective to the boat and further beyond. You can never zoom anything beyond your vanishing point ever. You guys can write this down, jot this into your mind. You cannot zoom something in once it's gone beyond your vanishing point. And I so, hope so, uh, well, Brenda, well, Brenda asked a follow-up question. She said, why can we see the wall that's behind the model? Because the wall is beyond the vanishing point. We can see well, like, the rubber stuff see. that you're talking about, the rubber part of Black the bottom. Rubber. It's just all nonsense. The mast is the highest part. You see the mast last. It no, has no, the largest the circle of sight. Here's the diagram that Jason has on. Wait, 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 wait. One, yeah, the question you're about skipping the mall. past, so not letting us respond, Ronnie. So, so Go I ahead. question about the mall. Um, the mall, we could see the wall and the rubber goo on the bottom of the wall behind the model, right? But that's the behind trim? the vanishing point, right? Are you trying to state that you think that the mall is being... Um, curved up like a steve lord stephen christ concave mall well no. you said we can't see her feet because, because there, there is some good. distortion that happens at the horizon have you ever watched a car drive away into a sunset you can see distortion everywhere yeah, what i just showed you was her that. feet were truncated upwards due to the vanishing point you, you i said just we could you. not see things past the vanishing points but the wall is behind the model Look, Jason raised his camera in elevation, and now on the left side, what you can see is her feet in full view and the floor being completely flat, not concaved up like yes. your nonsense and you what, just tried to spin it, and not Ronnie, curving down Ronnie, because of the changed, vanishing point you, of the camera. No, because the camera is the same camera. She stood, I presume, the same When he distance. raised the camera the in elevation, is, please, you have Ronnie, a larger circle of sight. You You're not understanding what I'm saying. different angle so that the light is no, not No, it's not a different angle. He raised an elevation. He live streamed the whole thing. Am I wasting my time here? I, I mean, I do want to right. talk to sure. you guys, but you have to let us respond as well. I mean, the, the, that, those two images, I presume she stood the same distance away. The only thing you've changed, and assume you haven't moved the camera nearer, is you've changed the angle. Therefore, the rays of light from her shoes traveling towards you are following a different path. They're not being bounced and reflected around. And with my image, which I showed you the ship, that was crystal clear. Two things. One, a flat earth won't have a crystal clear horizon edge. And secondly, that that uh, what is stopping you physically seeing physically seeing the hull of that boat if i lifted myself up i just explained 50, to you. if i yeah if i lifted myself up 50 feet i'm still looking the same distance virtually no your to distance the hull. to your vanishing point gets much larger and there is a slight drop in the angle to the relative vanishing point that becomes it's, i explained the higher in elevation you raise the, the larger your circle of sight it's all in it's all in this video if you so, want to so see it one question real quick why is she so much bigger in the right one than the left one uh due to the angle of perspective but we're explaining to you oh, do you think that that somehow debunks that her feet are gone and when he raises an elevation you can see her feet because you've enlarged your circle of well, sight could just you be think, the, the cameras you think crabby. that the, the waves okay if you guys want to sit on that as your debunk haha -ha, because it's wavy you're totally well, no, no. missing the actual evidence and that's fine we knew that you were going to be a reality denier we know the no, wall look, is further away I... than she is the no, wall can is I explain? behind the circle of perspective. Can anybody hear me? Perspective, but we can still see the wall. Yeah, can go anybody ahead, hear me? Explain it. We hear you. Yeah, Jay. I'm the one that made the video, right? Yeah. Let's <laughs> listen to you. Oh, thank you. I finally got to talk. So the <laughs> camera is up on a tripod for the picture that's on the left. And this was from the footage, the position that she was standing in, the look that she had with that image on the wall right there i loved that shot and uh, from the footage where the camera is on the floor um, i chose another shot of her that i liked and i put the two images side by side for us to compare Have they got standing... different zoom values or something no what then what like tom said why is she bigger in that one just or is it cropped cropped 
cropped. Yeah, okay. when I put the okay. two when I put the two images together. But do you? Uh, so in the left the left portion, it, uh, the camera's on top of your tripod. Let's say I don't know three and a half four foot high. So you have a certain angle between you, your camera, and the floor. There's an angle to her feet, isn't there? However many degrees. Let's say it's five degrees. So, so the, 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 fr the, the floor to her shoes back up to the camera is about five degrees. With the image on the right, your camera is on the floor. Let's say it's one degree. Yeah, that triangle is one degree now. So you've changed the path of the light. That light is getting refracted and bounced around. Snell's law is changing I've, density in the air. And what I've done is I've made the circle of sight smaller by putting the camera on the ground. That's the reason why her feet start to look like she's disappearing into nothingness as she's walking away halfway down the mall. Now, the thing is, is there is a live stream of this entire thing that um, you can check. You, you can see the actual footage from the live stream. It's all available. And um, yeah, it's just, you can test this anywhere. Go to a large factory and have somebody walk away from you on a perfectly flat floor, and you're going to see them disappear from the bottom up on a perfectly flat plane. We're just pointing out that this is how perspective works on flat surfaces. But no explanation of why that black um, uh, line behind her feet, why it's all distorted on the rightmost uh, image then. Why would it distort? It hasn't changed its distance away from you, so why is it distorted? Because it's it's beyond, this is something that's beyond the circle of sight here that there is a haze that happens right there. Now, I know you, you want to look at some zoomed in footage of like the sun at the horizon. So we're outside of a building and you're talking about the reflection at, at different elevations. We're going to get to that kind of stuff. But I wanted to just bring this up. Um, I feel like time wise, we're sort of going to have to jump ahead yeah uh, uh, also time's getting on for me because uh, obviously we did have delays at the beginning and I, i'm gonna have to get on in a not too long a time all right so let's be judicious with our time and uh i want to show you some clouds behind the sun and stuff flying can you show us your best right evidences for, for the, your best evidences to debunk the globe or your best evidences to show the earth is flat there's there's too many we've already we've just yeah, begun I, I know, but unfortunately, I've only got so long. So I'm going to ask you, can we move on well, to your strongest? Where, where he was going into the clouds behind the sun. Go into the section that you were prepared to go into. Be There's fun. obviously going to be some super chat questions, right, T-Jump? Or are you not getting any? Oh, yeah, I got a few. Um, okay, but Jason does want to go into the clouds behind the sun. I believe that's where he was going. You have to re-screen share the motion program. Mm. Um, our best proofs of the Earth being flat is the sea level itself. We've been showing you throughout the whole podcast how perspective works, how the different rotations and motions do debunk the heliocentric model. But we're not here to prove to the, you that the Earth is flat. We're here to show you that your heliocentric model, including the sky and everything else that you witness, is very wrong. And you were sold a lie by Kabbalistic mystics who didn't believe in, in what you think you believe in and they did it so that you could become an i don't know if both of you if mr sensible is what's the argument but jason continue i was just talking while you got prepared yeah so this is some footage that ronnie took uh, we were actually with friends so you're going to hear some people talking in the background about what it is that we are filming here now the thing that i i the reason why i have it in here is because i can put on an array of different filters where we can see this in a whole bunch of different ways and uh, so clouds behind the sun is a real thing that we've been proving for a long time take a look at this footage Spill a fucking ocean. and here we go so clouds this this is just the raw footage the without any sort of filters there it is on the p1000 there it is in now the regular camera add a little, your regular little emboss filter but here you go. I'm going to add a little clouds behind little the sun. There's clouds in front of at the bottom here. Right? It's going to adjust clouds this. clearly around it behind it. And what you can see. So you're basically saying that sun so is within the clouds. The uh, yep, that's, that's what they're saying. Yes. Well, let's talk yes. about the emboss filter. What it's doing, Jason. Well, well it's, <laughs> it's working on the imagery he recorded. But you'd have seen that with the naked eye, too. We All did. you've got is some bits uh, in, in that still there at about the five o'clock position. You can see cloud in front in of the front sun of. Oh. because it's thicker cloud. Any oh. cloud that, <laughs> any cloud that's, any that is cloud hilarious. That's, 
any cloud that's across the rest is obviously thinner, and so the sun is shining straight so, through it. So you understand that thinner clouds concept. are sh the thinner clouds are showing up in the emboss filter that is applied here. It has no, nothing to do with the thickness of the clouds. It has to do with the perception of the depth of the clouds inside the shot. We we, we came prepared for you to make that claim. So it's the let's. Well, I mean, what would follow if, if your claim was correct? What would follow is that sun is literally within the clouds. Yes, the clouds that's what we're saying. To be a few kilometers up, a couple miles. No, over, that's a couple. So your sun is within a couple of miles of the surface of the Earth. In which case, how can you see it across half of the Earth at the same time? This is ridiculous. Well, you no, live we... in a virtual reality, and the way that it works is depending on your latitude and longitude, you'll have the sun in a certain angle at a certain time every day. Right. So here's here's another piece of wait wait so, so I just want to jump in here so if I take a bunch of pieces of tape and I put a p one piece of tape one layer of tape over the entire uh, let's say again we're plane. looking at observations T jump and you're bringing right, up shush, nonsensical shush, thought shush, experiments shush. again get someone else to turn shush we're not so getting anything tape and put it over like a, a piece of glass and I hold it up to the sun and then to put another piece of tape somewhere in the middle that one piece of tape will be darker like it'll it'll seem like the sun's coming through all of the top pieces of tape because they're they're light the same consistency but the bottom piece of tape that has two layers it'll be darker and so it'll seem as if the sun is behind the first one but in front of the second one because of the consistency of the brightness but if you the more layers of tape you add the darker it will be even though the sun is still behind all of the pieces of tape so i can generate that exact same image with tape on no, a you piece can't. of glass continue jason that's just nonsensical yeah, no. reality you're just talking you, you can do this so, you can do this if i could only speak all right, so the um, I came prepared for you guys to say that it was the brightness of the sun. Yeah, so okay. We're going to take a look at some of this footage here. Now I can show it to you, uh, you know, original style like this first. This is the way you'll see it on YouTube. So notice this. And here we go. I got to turn off the audio on this other clip now. Yeah, but, but Jason, we're not denying what it looks like. No, that we're, image, that's, that's still great. There. Yeah. That's what That's it looked, looks like. It's an optical illusion. No, you're no, going to tell me that because, my observations because, are illusions and you want me to go to uh, his tape over your phone. Oh, sorry, it's your, it your film. Sorry, it's your film, Ronnie, yeah? This one here is from Flatter Photography. Mine was oh, the original. Okay. But what okay. we want you to pay attention to is how the sun is literally slicing this cloud here. Show them how it comes out the what? other side of the sun. Yeah. Slicing so did you Let's did, look at it. Let's yes, look at did it. you see it at the beginning? A little bit. All right. Watch this cloud here. Yep. The little tiny cloud that's not being obscured by the brightness of the sun. Yeah. The the darker ones are definitely staying in front of. Watch how it splits like that. Jason's got. All right. This is just without filters on it. We can add filters after this. I just want you to be. I just What's want you to become here? familiar with it. Watch the watch how the backside comes out from behind there. You can go back a frame. You can see how it was split in half. <laughs> Um, no. Um, so if you have a really bright light and you shine it over something, they'll think. So why is it not blowing lower... out the rest of the clouds? Shush, 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 Ronnie. So if you have a really bright light and you show it over something that has multiple different layers of density, the lower layers of density will disappear first and reappear first. This is not hard. We're looking at multiple densities. Some of the wispier clouds are behind the sun. You guys open your yeah. eyes. We're yeah. showing you that the sun is like... literally slicing that cloud. It's observable, repeatable, and you can go out and investigate this yourself. We have guys that have joined on that have watched our programs that have gone out and bought these tools uh david pack we he sh joined up due to reality check wait, wait, wait. And you can get us on telegram and he's so, going out and he's verifying that clouds are definitely behind in front of and being sliced by the moon and he's just somebody that showed up not even that long ago I do, I do, so okay, again so these wait, are things wait, that we want people to test so again you can just google creating art with tape and scalpel and you can recreate this on a piece of glass you can cause nick the west did it with a thing. film strip and he ronnie, had to be taken ronnie, down ronnie, because wait, ronnie wait so you can cop you can create this exact same footage by just using layered tape on a piece of do, glass do you know how retarded that sounds ronnie, he jumped? Ronnie, you're talking ronnie, nonsense we're looking at ronnie. an actual observable repeatable evidence and you're telling yes, me you want yes, me to put ronnie, tape ronnie, on my ronnie, ronnie, you are ronnie, sounding retarded ronnie, bro ronnie. i'm just gonna be quiet go ahead so, so if you can create this same phenomenon on a single plane of glass which you know the sun is behind all of the glass so it can't be behind the tape on you the can't glass, you can go ahead and do it and send me the video and we'll come on stream and we'll look at your nonsense putting tape on glasses we're looking at actual Actual evidence, like we said, we're going to show you oh real God. evidence. Oh let's, let's see if let's well, see if you can let's see well, if you can do this with tape here. Sure. All right. So now we're going to show something flying through the sun. 
Brian, flying let's through see. the sun. Go on then. Yes. I'd like to see this. Let's go. So here, yes, finally. Um, I gotta check a couple filters here. This turn off all the filters. Yes, I'm going to. I gotta move my camera so I can see where. But just while he's uh, uh, fiddling with that, Ronnie, uh, this business of the clouds is is only two. It's not business. <laughs> Hold up, let please do me the courtesy, please. There's mm -hmm. only two possibilities. Either it's an optical illusion, as Tom and myself are saying, or that sun really is amongst the clouds. That those are the only two possibilities. Aren't yes. yes, yes, you got in it. In which case, if you're talking about the sun only being a few thousand feet high, right? then just geometrically, it cannot be dawn on one side of the earth, midday. Well, the scriptures say, so the sun sets, yes. so too he rises, and he You're rests gonna... not throughout his circuit. And yes, everybody, I explained to you, I'll say it again, I'll give it back to you, Jason. Sun's rise and set angles are dependent on where you are, east or west, on our four squared rectangle map. You're going to have to want... come back because we actually have it all modeled out already, showing the uh, the rise set angles within a person's circle of sight we've got it to a hundredth of a degree per second so this footage right here a lot of people are familiar with this in flat earth because it um it came from a, a popular shazwar? popular fake flat earther play, play and shazwar video. shazwar bug tea all right so in the in the background here you're going to see something something come a light come on just watch there it comes through and it shoots out there all right, that, all right so i've got better footage of it than this but i just what, what wanted to show this to because be? this this had millions millions of views on it and um so the premise is that we get planes flying through the sun so let me go to Screw my it. footage of this quick. interacting with the luminary itself did anyone on the plane notice the fact that they've so, been great question so what we have here is the same principle that is put into play with everything that's in the sky all luminaries rainbows stars sun and moon all are fixed to, to your observable position depending on your elevation is how far or close the sun and moon are so the person in the plane is three miles away from us and they see the sun three miles further from them but from our vantage point inside the simulation slash virtual reality is the better way to put it this is how we observe it and this is evidence that we're putting forth so what we have a super chat specifically about this uh super chat from andre's elf why don't why have no airplanes crashed into the sun because if it's in the clouds... i just explained it i just explained it for you get a pen i'll say it again so the plane the sun the moon the stars and you know how they say you'll never get to the end of a rainbow it's because the rainbow is actually uh, locked to your position equidistantly you, the closer you move to the rainbow the rainbow continues to move further away due to the you fact that it's then how is point. it in the clouds i know why i'm teaching you the truth of it you're teaching you so nothing. the person the reason is, the rainbow that's because you're not move. opening your brain enough if the plane is has a fixed position to the sun the sun will continue to stay the fixed distance away from the plane but what we're observing in the virtual reality is basically how it breaks down these are clues that were left behind for us to investigate and discover so so how is it in the clouds because if it's literally in the clouds it can't be receding infinitely when you go to it at the same time All i right. just explained it can you guys know can you guys see computer is makers? anybody listening anybody listening Yes. All right. Ahead. We're going to take a look at an airplane that's coming in. This is footage that I got. It, I barely get it on the left side entering the sun, but I do pan up and we get to see it coming out real cleanly. Okay. And this is without the filters being applied. So you saw a little bit of a streak right there. Then I pan up and it comes out through the other side. Now, at this point right here, is there anybody that's going to deny that this plane is interacting with the sun? Me. Yes. <laughs> so you're, you're going to say that, that plane's gonna... about 93 million miles away, of course, and very, very large. So you're going to say that you, you're going to say that you don't see and this right proof. here. Yes. No, what you can see is you can see the light reflecting on uh, off the exhaust or, or contrail that the plane's leaving behind. Yeah. The reason you couldn't see the plane when it was right in front of the sun is there's a bloody great light behind it blinding you no we're gonna we're gonna prove you wrong right now so, so, so like if i take a off. if i take a mirror or a sheet it's... and i put it above the sun retrospective the sun will reflect off the mirror sheet and hit my eye and it'll appear brighter because more of the light is hitting the sheet and reflecting well, I back. Mean, so like, what does that even mean t john what are you like i don't understand it's not reality again you're asking me to imagine some crazy thought yeah. please explain to me what you're trying to say the plane literally comes out through the disc of the sun the other one did too do flashlights reflect off of clouds 
Can you can you point a flash? I don't think so. I don't think we could reflect. I don't know. I don't think so. Do, do you, I don't do know. Do you see the flashlight hitting the cloud? Like, do you see the light that hits the cloud? I don't have a flashlight that can light up clouds. Jaronism might have that one. Oh my mm. god! Like really? The really one he did. used to prove the curvature of the Earth, right? <laughs> it was it's a pretty, flashlight pretty, experiment. Pretty easy to understand. But we are showing like, you guys things to really kiddo, check out kiddo, your reality. Kiddo, kiddo, don't like, you? You can point a flashlight at a cloud and it lights up, right? You can it illuminates the cloud. Light reflects. All I mean, of you the think cloud. you bounced a photon off the moon, so I don't know. Do you have any evidence or data to back up that claim that you made with your debate with Jason that you bounced a photon off the moon and you received the signal back? Bounced a photon off the moon? You mean a radio yeah? You wave? said in your debate that you bounced a photon off the moon, correct or incorrect? Radio waves, like a photon. Okay, yes, so anybody, it was a radio wave. Okay, photons off the moon. Put a laser at it. You bounce a photon so off the moon. It was a radio wave, right? Radio waves aren't photons. I don't think. I mean, or I just do you yes, have data yes, or yeah, backup waves science because yeah. most people will use that claim because they've seen it on MythBusters, and what? I just wanted to see if you Myth actually Busters. had the data to back up how long it took for your, because if you actually had that data, it would probably give us a more local, real understanding of how far the moon actually is. Yes, so, that was the point of the test. You can bounce ham radios off the moon. Yes, anybody can do that. You, you can do that. But how come you can bounce signals off of the stratosphere without how is it getting through those Lorentz type bounce systems and not coming back to you off of just bouncing off of the atmosphere? Using a longer wavelength because if you have longer wavelengths, they don't bounce off the stratosphere. Okay, you answered my question. That's all I wanted to know. Okay. All right. So here you can clearly see when something flies in front of the sun. Right. It's very obvious. Now, let's. This is somebody else's footage, and um, is this David a, Pack? Yeah, it gets a whole bunch of, um, he must be near the airport. Here's one coming in right Red here. Shots. And boom, you see the interaction. It's frozen. Two. It's, it's frozen. Yeah, I see I'm, seeing, I'm seeing a still, Jason. Maybe unscreen share and rescreen share, because this is some great stuff. David Pack is new. We found him again on Reality Check Telegram. The link is in our chat. Um, he showed up. He's got this great vantage point. Go ahead, Jason. Now we can see it. All right, so... He's near an airport, obviously. He's got a bunch of planes flying through. One just went in here. Another one's going to come in right here. This one came out. This one came out. We're not done yet. We now, got... now we're now we're just Same seeing a, it's hard to tell. We're seeing a Nikon P1000 Sunset Dallas, Texas link. Okay, Same there. We've seen it go into the sun there. I saw that. What? It's the Same thing. It's going to come out the right side. It's gone. For some reason, it's blurry. This is a uh, rate from his own channel, Jason. Why is it blurry? Mm -hmm. But he's got but some great footage. This is this is not difficult. If if you're stood or someone stands in front of a car headlight uh, at night and it's on full beam, you're not really going to see anything, are you? It's but, just blinding. But he's showing planes going in front of the sun and planes coming out from behind. Yes, it, we can reproduce right? this with car lights. That's what he's saying. If you stand in no, front you of can't you walk in front of a car light, you'll get the I same mean, phenomenon. There you we can go. Clearly see before before the plane is even at the uh look at this. You can clearly see it interacting right here, and then it'll So you're saying through. that plane's going behind the sun? Well, or through it. Look at well, if it was behind it, suddenly for them traveling whichever direction, the sun's on the wrong side of the aircraft. Do you not think they'd notice that as well? The sun is always projected at its azimuth and altitude and based on elevation. So the people inside this airplane would see the sun at the same at the same heading, right at the correct elevation, but out at their horizon. So, so you're saying really that sure we that see the sun in front of the plane, but the plane sees the sun behind the plane and because of magic. No, no not because no, of magic. magic. That's re that's re <laughs> but, uh, if you want to talk so about you, magic, okay, was that, let's well, talk about the, let's talk about the green flash. You guys know about the green flash? Mr. Sensible has to know. Yeah. It's, it's only to do with uh, the, the way lights bend in the last few seconds. Lights up. bending. Of course, you get bends. a fish tank and you put sugar in it and you shoot a laser. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like from, from That's one thing you can Pirates do. Pirates the Caribbean, where there's the, the ship at the end, the green flash that we talked about. Yeah, there's... Watch, yes. watch the bottom of this. So this is, this is what we can actually achieve with our best 
best optics right now. So the Go on P1 in. the P1000 has 125x zoom. That's a I'll 3000. Pause you, three, pause you for 3, one 000, second, Jason. Not not yeah. not to argue not to argue your point, but I just like to point out the P1000 is not the ultimate in cameras no. or, or zoom. No. Not at all. No. It's the flat earthers camera of choice, but that's about it. But carry on. Well, it's it's a good choice because it actually has more more zoom capability than most amateur telescopes right it, and a it's tiny really not... tiny ccd yes and the bigger the telescope diameter the better the aperture the better the low light i understand all that but okay. as far as zoom is concerned this gives us the poor man the ability to get in to the horizon and see what's taking place there and okay. you can actually see there's it looks like some sort of energy merge right here all all sunrises and sunsets just wait <laughs> if, well, if yes, so why it, is the green flag not just like uh a uh what's it rainbow which is a refraction of light how is this not a problem all right and so once again the the sun is not so strong that we can easily <laughs> Oops, we can sun. easily see things in front of it yeah, right if Amazing. you pause there a second jason yeah that's right the, the sun doesn't appear so strong it hasn't changed its brightness it's just shining through an awful lot more atmosphere because it's just skimming over the top of the ball what i don't see any yeah, atmosphere there what are you talking about you're imagining don't things see any again. atmosphere no i see clearly i see the hall i see the clouds are uh, shade i see the cloud, clouds yes, are but it's running. traveling through more of it okay if, gonna, if we see, see alaska from out. russia yeah. go ahead you're going to see on the zoom out the entire perspective so the camera's auto exposure is what gives us this high contrast scene like this but let's let this come on down and That's take a an look at this is a real sunset it's not a david weiss shrinking sun now, where's now, the reflection it, now where's it. the reflection where's your reflection where, where, now oh, where's look, the rest of the that. sun suddenly gone where do you think it's gone mr <laughs> sensible well, the, the sun hasn't gone anywhere. What's happened is the Earth is, re, in effect, rotating away. Rotating away? So We're falling backwards is, so away the, from the sun? Y yes. Not falling backwards. That's what you just but stated. The, just just it's wait. Not backwards. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. There it is. Yeah. So lovely, Where did the sun? Where flash. is the sun going here? Where is it going? Why? Why don't we see the sun curving around the backside of the Earth as you just stated? That we're, we're, we're falling you backwards, are staring we west. Are we're falling the sun going uh, behind the, excuse me, behind around the, curve, the curvature. But, but you have got at that point just about the maximum amount of atmosphere you're looking at what? you have changes in temperature, changes in density. We see you a little get haze. refraction, which is going to twist. We it's going to make it look fuzzy and this is happening but above the, the refraction gone? the whole thing's the same distance away and if it if if that sun is only a couple miles up mm, there it goes that was awesome where did it go why is the if it's 90 million miles away and it's a huge ball of light and gas and fire how come it's not still shining around the curve of the earth here it, it is sorry, that's why you can it still is. Got day, that's why you still got daylight oh. there Got yeah. a little no daylight here, has yeah. nothing to do with the sun daylight and night were set before Daylight's the sun was put into creation <laughs> that's correct really? yes you can really? see the daylight yes but wait so, so what's the what's the green the green flash what about it why is it not just refraction like a like a rainbow what's the problem here you can see you can <laughs> see these flags on buoys out at the horizon right here right right yep. now the there is wow. the top flag on a buoy there's another one over here a flag on the buoy cool. yeah and this is where the sun is sitting in a green flash above the horizon. Which is evidence of what? What's the problem here? Mir mirage is a distortion or mirages. a thing. Yes. What, what is a mirage if it's not? Now you sound like the fake flat earthers. <laughs> Rob Skiba and uh, Rick Dick Homer went to the Lake Michigan and tried to pretend that they were able to film Lake Michigan from the other side, Chicago. And, and mirages and refraction. Yes, we see a bit of a bit of haze and blurriness at the horizon, but we're looking above that where the sun is actually disappearing into we don't know what. We're asking you what we're looking at. Yeah, no. Well, how how high is that camera roughly? Do you know? We'd have uh, to ask David. On. It's probably six feet above the. Above okay, the, he's got it on a tripod, right. I assume. So how far away was that sun? Because going back to your woman in the shopping mall, she apparently lost her feet at, at, at 150 yards. That was due to the, the and yet that sun you can camera. see for several miles away, apparently slowly disappearing. Anyway, I don't know why you guys are coming up with stuff with that. Why not just go up and have a look and see the shape of the Earth?
We, oh, you want us to go up in a rocket? Which yeah, is we've, can, we've just, we just we just covered options. we just covered the highest altitude that uh, has ever taken place. So high altitude well, balloons can get you up to they say two hundred seventy three thousand feet, and the highest rocket was able to get up to just like three hundred thousand feet. That is the limitation, and everything beyond that's not real. So I had talked about um, pressure with T jump earlier and. And we went through in our most recent hangout the debunks of satellites and space travel and all that stuff based on pressure because there's no more air up at those altitudes. We showed how the reason why the high altitude balloons break is because there's no more air pressure. The That's right. balloon expands well, into the there point is some, that it but, pops. but it's very, very low. Yeah, it gets to zero at about zero. 150,000 feet. And we well, don't pizza, believe in pizza. we lived in a pressurized pizza dome like Nathan Oakley too. Don't be care to be careful no, not no, to straw man because that's a retarded no, I haven't statement. I have strawmanned you at all. I haven't straw you. I just agreed that as mm -hmm. you go uh, to a certain height, the pressure gets lower and lower and lower. Nothing until it's virtually zero. It's not quite zero, but it gets to virtually zero because even space wouldn't be zero. Well, they say at one hundred fifty thousand feet, it's like point zero 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 one six. Well, I got a question for you. Can, uh, can, um, so, so you're saying, I just want to clarify something really quick. So you're saying that uh, things disappear at the vanishing point from the bottom up. Um, that means that, and the higher they are, the further away the vanishing point is, right? And yep. so if a plane and the sun are both like far away and that the sun is like going down the atmosphere, how could a plane pass behind the sun if it's a further away vanishing point while the, the sun is The vanishing point is perspective point. to the observer. That's what we explained. So the vanishing point of the person on the plane, the sun is still three miles away. But the vantage point from the person on the ground with the sun in the right position would put the plane interacting with the sun, and that's what we witness. That Nikon ever made. Oh, uh, um, far, how I, far we can see? I'm going to have to go very shortly. May I present a uh, rather neat bit of it, uh, evidence? This is an experiment that I did. I think I mentioned it when we uh, met uh, at the top of the stream, uh, Jason. Yeah, you can share uh, Okay, thank you. I'd like to show you uh, a photograph first and see what you make of, uh, make of, uh, where is it? Come on, come on. Is it? I'm not sure which one it's showing. What's that showing? Is it showing? A oh. black screen right now. It's, yep. Black Double click. Oh, no. Black. Oh, there we go. We're good. Yeah. So what can you see? You can see two lines and a curve of the horizon, yeah? Yep. Is that what you can see? Whether you agree with it or not, is that what you can see? Is this yeah? from a satellite? No, this is it from says a, like 30,000 feet, right? It says 30, 35,000. Right, 35,162 mm -hmm. meters, about mm -hmm. 200 meters, uh, or, or actually uh, about three, 400 meters. No, mm -hmm. about 3,000 meters, beg your pardon, lower than Felix Baumgartner, this shot. That so, wasn't real. Yeah, that was green screened, and he jumped into a foam ball. Let's leave foam ball. Well, let's leave Baum Gartner out. I was just giving you an idea. I'm just giving you an idea of the height. This is 35 kilometers high. Can you not see a curve there? Yeah, the the image itself has obviously been squished, and this is something that Red's Redder tried to do. He tried to take a picture of a flat horizon, and then he tried to squish it and show you. Look, measure up to the line. How? Okay, Ronnie, Ronnie, what makes you think this is squished? Well, right now we're only seeing uh, the the image itself is truncated. We're not seeing the complete fullness of the image. Well, I can no. tell you that right now. <laughs> uh, you, okay, let me just have a quick look, see what you're you're seeing to make sure. Where where did we get this? Bit... This is from NASA. No, hold on. Um, I'm just trying to have a look at the uh, stream to see if hit I can the live see button. Live, the hit whole... the live button. There you go. Live. So, so, oh right, it's go. still showing stuff about your your son. Uh, uh, am I? Um, no, that's that is not. That is not. Oh, that this is, not is the NASA. image. Sorry, and the image is truncated. So you're basically proposing that this is This is you're showing us your evidence of curvature. This is a picture from 35 kilometers showing curvature, right? I don't now, think it's coming through right now. You might have to reshare it. Yeah, something's truncated. Okay, let, let's try that then. Um, oh, new share. Or do I have to stop share? Yeah, okay. stop and re reshare. Has that come through now? No, it's still it's still uh, frozen. No. Oh, okay. Uh, there you I'll go. Now you're about to refresh. Right. Share. Hopefully that's coming up. Now, now it's clear. Yeah. So that is showing the curve of the Earth 
uh, at a view of 35 kilometers okay this now you can see there's a grid over it with with a curved line that's the predicted curve mathematically the predicted curve for a height of 39 kilometers now this weather balloon did not quite reach that uh, the the height we wanted um with, with regard to getting a good shot able to to see what was um what what was there to see now you said um it's squished that is not squished those two lines those two lines hit here is still from a video just trying it, to... also what you have is when a camera tilts up and down up in the air what we do have is sometimes concave earth and sometimes sphere earth so you've just taken an image of while it was pointed at an angle away from the horizon curving right. it due to the lens right. of the camera okay the answer is no uh, because there, there's three main types of lenses you get fisheye lenses which are the ones where, where people hold a selfie stick yeah. that looks like they're stood on a tiny ball forget <laughs> that you've got wide angle lenses which do distort like that and as you move up and down you'll get convex and concave and here's a good an, one Im here is an image of mage this is the it's weather a, balloons. a rectilineated this... lens is the correct yes. answer you didn't give us that information and if it was no, a rectilineated you will be the only person that has proof of curvature and if people want to well, let the well, cognitive well, dissonance trying, believe just that you just showed this. the curve I'm Go trying ahead. I'm trying to present the evidence that camera you can see the white uh sort of bit of pipe um in the middle the camera is mounted just below that pointing towards the left on the left you can see two strings those are taut spring-loaded strings so they are always they are always straight there they are across the image wow. so if the if the image got distorted by me through some dodgy purposes or dodgy method the strings would be distorted in fact there is a very very slight bowing downwards of the lower string because of barrel distortion which you get even in a rectilinear lens but the curve is going the other way. You don't get the uh, convex or concave distortion across the middle of the lens. You've, you've thought it of it all with that graphic. Huh? Jason, what do you think of this curvature earth evidence? Right. Is this repeatable, verifiable? Can I go out and test this myself, Mr. Yes. Sensible? Of course you in can. our audience, we've yes. shared in the beginning of this that my premise was that you can go out and test everything that Jason Look, can say. There is so me. You're, you're telling me. Okay, there ahead. is me launching it. If, if my video kicks in, it's for some reason it's buffering a bit. Um, but there is me. So you oh. conducted this experiment yourself. Do you have yes, a verified he built this. other per yeah, show me somebody else that oh. is not connected to you with the same clip and the oh, same experiment? On. Right? There Let's see more. Yeah, sorry, I don't know. But your why balloon went things. 35 kilometers up, and you're you're touting this as proof of curvature of the Earth's rontidity. Well, here, because here of these is, two tightening strings here, that you have here. Hold on, look, look, look. Here are the three cameras. There's an upward facing balloon camera, which is wide camera. There's a rear facing wide camera so you can see that that gets distorted left right and center but on the main screen that's the rectilinear lens with two spring loaded strings and in fact we were talking about the balloon bursting have a look at this this is a thing of beauty that is the yeah. uh nice hydrogen picture balloon as it's bur bursting and it bursts at the speed of sound um so yeah i i um sent that up I Good took work. that imagery. Yeah, we Sorry? just we, we just covered this topic, and yeah, great job. So it doesn't the, quite match the, the video that we saw. The thing that what do you mean uh, doesn't I match pay the attention. Video? What what camera were you using? Um, for the, right, for the it, rectilineated. It, yeah, it was it was uh, a non distorted camera. I can't remember the name off the top of my head, but on my channel is the Mage video. All the cameras are listed okay yeah, so what what do you say is the natural view of a human what how many millimeter equivalent would you say i, I don't quite know what you mean but so by that. but look if, guys, if you were here if you it were, is nice here it here it is uh, and i've definitely got buffering here i'm getting internet problems can you still hear me yep we yeah. can hear you okay my picture's frozen but there's the two spring-loaded strings there's the the camera mounting was looking through it so if that horizon is a curve in between there 
if I had got that curve by distorting it, then these strings would have been distorted as well. You know how They're easy not. you can crop in, chroma key in two lines across the screen? <laughs> he hacked it. Like, he you know how easy it is? I could show you the so, ISS transiting yeah, the sun and the moon and the stars, you and you would got... have no idea I could put the two strings there. You know, <laughs> no, nonsensical. The no okay, argument. But hey, at least you did the that's balloon thing. And, no, uh, and how were you able to track it? I find it amazing. Would I have done anything I've ever yeah. shot up into the sky I lost? You know, did you have a yeah. tracker? But anyway, yeah, Jason, do you have more... Let, well, let me tell you, we had two GPS trackers. They broadcast their location. High altitude, high altitude balloon enthusiasts around the country track it, upload to a central server. We download, so we got the current location. It traveled one direction for so many miles, back another direction for so many miles. It landed about 40 miles from the start point. Okay, uh, the flight time was about two and three quarter hours. Now, when we were at ground level, the only tracking station that could pick it up was us. When we were uh, at uh, the maximum height, it could be tracked from 400 miles away. We were seeing further and further around the curve, something I think, called the radio horizon. I, I think it's great that you did the experiment. I find it fishy that you don't remember the camera, but you remember that the tinsel oh, strength of the right. I, I can find But continue, out Jason right wants just, to go on to, let's go on to the sun's locality <laughs> again. Do. I bet you do. And and you uh, let's, say, uh, 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 let's move on. Uh, yeah, you yeah. think that that picture of somehow proves that the earth is a curve, and I find that yes. hilarious. So, yes, it does. It, it I mean, was there in front of camera. your eyes. I filmed it with, with a video camera. You know, yeah. a, a little, it wasn't a GoPro, or it might be a GoPro, but it was one with that did not have the wide angle lens. Otherwise, okay. the strings would have been distorted. They weren't. You can't have it both ways. Either the lens yeah, you know what I said to your audience, if they want to allow cognitive dissonance to allow them to believe they live on a sphere because of that one image that you just showed us, go ahead. Let's move on. Jason's no, got I've more. got a full video, including a launch to landing, and I even leave the film running for for about 30 minutes while it's upside down on in a field until I pick it up. So you can see me let go of it. You can see it go up. You can see it seeing across 400 miles. You can see it come down. You see it land and me walk up and pick it up. That's an uncut video footage. You can deny what NASA you see. does a great job too of it. Jason's got some really interesting stuff. Unfortunately, that you I'm not look connected at. to NASA. That's great. Mm -hmm. I, th I think okay, I just sure. want to bring up that that was a really great point where he brought up the video. Ronnie said it was distorted. And then Mr. Sensible showed that there were literally two physical strings in front of the camera. So if it was distorted, the strings would have been distorted. Disproving all you have to do is pull the key out the strings and paste them back on top of the image. But he did say it was. Seconds. If you he, watch the actual video, Ronnie, you can see the strings. You can see as it the thing turns around because it's dangling from the blue. You can see the shadows pass along the strings. Uh, so, so in it, that it's very work. in that very short distance, we were able to see that the bottom string did have a curve to it. You called it barrel distortion. So yeah, that right there is going to be amplified at a larger distance. If we're seeing yes, that much opposite direction, that much it's the opposite direction. Thank you, uh, uh, Tom. Um, it's the opposite which happens direction. depending on the angle of the that? balloon. Why don't you have okay? Do you have full video footage of that happening constantly? That same sphere, or did you just take a screenshot? But we need to move on to something. Yes, more he has the full video. That. The full video is available. Yes, yes, a two and a half. Yeah, and we'll uncut. we'll look at it. And if people want to take their cognitive dissonance and believe that they live on a sphere because of your experiment, <laughs> Ronnie, but, go right ahead. Ronnie, but the, Ronnie, the rest of our presentation has okay. debunked everything. Holding an opinion or, or or having an idea of how something is is okay, but just saying no. -uh in the face of evidence is not okay your evidence is very circumstantial we're going to continue on to more actual repeatable oh. observable things that we can all do i don't need to have a <laughs> vatican telescope observable. or your it you don't even remember what kind of camera you're admitting that there was distortion in the and image nobody has been able to debunk <gasps> it debunk right, what so here, your picture here we have it? some footage of uh, a sun in a scene with what some people call chemtrails right uh, Jason, Jason, have, Jason, just, just, just sorry, just before you get behind. into, no, not to argue what you're talking about. Just to let you know. After this one, I'm going to have to go. Okay, All right. All right. Uh, and I would like to carry this on some other time. And I'll make sure to it. watch the rest of your video. Yeah. Right. yeah. Okay. So just to let you know, then, uh, Ronnie, uh, I've got two channels: Mr. Boldy Sensible Cats and Mr. Sensible Live. It, uh, it, that video is on both. It's called uh, Mage. The, what shape uh, is he? Is? Your Mage. teammate, Conspiracy Cats, donated his channel to you? Is that why it's called Cats? He did, actually, yes. Wow, that's great. I can't believe I knew that. Moving on. All right, so we're, here we have a scene with the, the sun, and we have these chemtraily looking things, and then a shadow on the clouds behind that. So 
if you this is footage where it pans around so this shadow the shadows always point to the location of the light source right sure yes yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. An that is an, I'll, I'll give you that. That's an, a more interesting picture than, this, than the airplanes flying through the sun or airplanes in clouds. That's more interesting. Well, there's, there's so many different ways that we can actually show and prove this, but it's hard when there's all these opposing opinions and we don't get the opportunity to actually go through all the evidence and analyze it. But uh, so what we're doing right now is just showing the things that show the locality of the sun. Right? In this case, we know here's here's one example of it uh, i'll show you another example it's all over the place um, where, going to swing into where the um the shadows are locating the sun in a, a person's circle of sight where the the shadows are being cast up on the bottom of clouds yep we we see this all over the place and, and where's the uh, sun look it's near here. the sun is just about to drop below below the horizon so yeah the shadows cast upwards the wrong way let's go let's go it's back it's not here. wrong why is that wrong yeah. you you're showing because this. the you, the shadows being cast backwards from this <laughs> x right here from the sun the the shadows being cast backwards on the wall this, making the sun local in the in the circle of sight right here <laughs> if the sun was 90 can, million miles away you could never have the shadow on that side of the of the chem trail yes you could no <laughs> you say that they're, they're called contrail <laughs> shadows like there's a name for this you guys need to do is you need to go to your local hardware store and see if they stock any d's because you're going to need three of them I don't know explain to means. us tell us the three d's i know you want to yeah three dimensional you you're finding it difficult to envisage things in 3d that's why you i build a problems in the 3d i am <laughs> about, <laughs> about the, the i the am eclipses. a builder that uses 3d modeling to sell my work i 3d model all of it i know how Good. i see things three-dimensionally that other people can't even comprehend i can and look many at people a, can't, i can, Jason, I can right. look at a plan that's on two-dimensional sheets and i can visualize the entire thing 3d i can tell you where the, which light's going to cast at what time of the year just in my head i don't i understand 3d and because i understand 3d i understand that the sun is in front of this cross right here because the shadow is being cast behind it well there's actually so this this is a well-known phenomenon you can actually google it of uh, contrail shadows and how they're formed it's it's pretty pretty easy to explain in multiple you got the ways. Snopes? Multiple ways to tell do us it. what snopes says please tell us tell everybody in the audience what snopes says how snopes. do they debunk this who's snopes it's a debunk nonsense Website. group <laughs> i'm just being funny oh. <clears throat> but really what we're looking at is the locality of the sun the shadows are showing its anti-position right Watch. pointing towards it so but one one uh shadows reflect or light reflects off of clouds remember so you can actually create a shadow by having the light reflect off of the cloud hit the kim trail thingy kim, kim trail and then hit the, the shadow is above the cloud though the sun must be below this and if the sun was what? 90 million miles away it would never be below this plane ever no, no. So, it's so, impossible. plane cloud cloud is here plane is here kim trail is here kim kim trail is and you, where's kim your trail. sun in your heliocentric model 90 so there's, million there's miles more away more clouds here clouds here if we were to do it scale if you were saying where the clouds were the sun would have to be in um england away from what? you t jump if you're in dallas what if we're trying to make a scale of what you're trying to draw have in you, your world have you view, noticed these pictures with with the the shadow supposedly in the wrong place the sun is always approaching the horizon because it's so lower it's than the plane at that like moment that. yes you've noticed a great observation that that is absolutely what's taking place right there yeah now now Which, answer Answer yeah, go this on, because then because I'm going to have to go. I'm afraid, guys. Go you, on. You yeah. said that. Just Thanks for coming on. Appreciate it. The chat. <laughs> We've got an echo. Literally. I don't know what happened there. No. All right. So here's so here's the video I took. As you can see, here's one more example. Matt Long. This. Matt Long. He had a P900. He's filming out, and the sun is actually coming up through the cloud layer before the horizon and um, no 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 the horizon is where that line is across yeah you don't see the partial that. disc no close your this, eyes mr sensible you don't this, see that this is That's the horizon the... yes the horizon's back here just wait i know it's hard to understand but we said you were going to be reality deniers it's fine we're just trying to open your broaden your horizons 
And you can clearly see when he zooms back in that the sun is in front of the horizon. That in and out move. So now uh, we got this. Now we got the sun coming out of the sea. So it's going through the clouds. It's dunking itself in the sea. It's just clouds. There's yeah, no sea we've, there. We've got all the footage. We can show it coming up out of the ground. Um, Trees this, behind this, it. This is popular footage that a lot of people know. Uh, and this one actually debunks yes. Eric Dubay because Dubay, Dubay teaches that the flat earth is a pizza pressurized dome and that the sun is always 3,000 miles up. What Jason was showing here is that the sun is actually local and goes way below the clouds. Those clouds aren't 3,000 miles high. Okay. No, that's a brilliant shot. And I can, I can never remember to where to get that where to get that from that shows you that if you've got the earth you've got your plane up here the sun's here shining up from underneath the clouds you have just busted the flat earth thank no, you no no we haven't <laughs> no this is this is actually predicted in the flat earth that we share yeah oh really yes i'd like yes. to know how the path of light can travel to come up from you're gonna have to watch the video we showed you you have to come back Unreal. rises I mean, from the east go, sets in the west right Guys, I am going to have to leave now. I'm going to say thank you very much, uh, Ronnie and Jason, for hosting uh, because it has been fun. And, and thank you for Tom for uh, for being my uh, or, or you know allowing me to be your team tag mate today. Really Thanks for coming that. on. Really appreciate it. No worries, no worries, uh, guys. I will. I'll try and watch the rest later. And um, if you uh, are going to do a part two, I'd be up for that too. Sounds good. Cool. Thanks Sounds for joining. Good. And um... so. If I could just uh, give a final shout out uh, yes. to myself, show myself. Uh, as I said earlier, I've got two channels, uh, Mr. Baldy Sensible Cat, Cats with a Z, which is where I've got uh, videos, and Mr. Sensible Live, where I've got some of my older videos, and I've got um, live streams and things like that. Please check out my mage. Uh, video uh, where you, there's several versions of the video. There's one where it's edited down to 45 minutes and explains everything uh, and shows the results. But there is also uh, an uncut film from both the balloon camera and an uncut film from launch to landing uh, from the uh, other cameras as well. Um, and I would like people to come back to me and try and debunk it. I really would because several people have tried. And only one person, I'll give a shout out to him, uh, Brian's Logic came up with one problem with it. Uh, the temperature readings were a couple degrees too high, which I acknowledged. But other than that, no one's managed to debunk it. So I'm going to say thank you very much, everyone. And thanks for all the viewers. Good night. See ya. <laughs> all right, uh, T-Jump, do you, do you have any questions that you would like to go sure. through? Sure. We got we got about eight questions, eight super chats. Oh, I uh, have some more memes to run through real quick while he sure, gets the super sure. chats memes are and great. questions. Memes are great for let, views. Let me show a couple, Jay. Can we? Yeah, yeah. If I'll take the screen share, I'll show a couple more memes here before we move on to the super chats. So um, these ones are pretty good. I don't know who believes in the the, the oh wrong screen share. Let me stop. I'll let you point up here. God <laughs> damn. I got to screen share the what is it that I want to screen share again? Yeah, my final cut. So check this out. Do you guys know or believe in the dinosaurs? Did you know that Sir Richard Owen, who created the term dinosaur, wanted to prove evolution to be true? He knew that many in the scientific community embraced that same goal as him. So he was broke, desperate to succeed. And after his invention of the, quote, dinosaur in 1842, amazingly, the first dinosaur discovery happened in 1858. Did you know that this is where your dinosaur story comes from, T. Jones? I don't believe that's true, no. I'm just reading to you from the evidence. Moving on here. This first, is what wait, atheists it, it, be it, like. First dinosaur, was discovered in, wait, wait, first dinosaur was discovered in 1677 by Robert Plott. Oh, so this is all incorrect, you're telling me. Yes, your meme is not factually correct. Surprising, I know. I know like all facts on the internet are true, but typically <laughs> memes not. Okay, so we'll do the back check and we'll 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 you send me who you think it was and your evidence. Robert that he was the Plott, first one. P-L-O-T, is credited with discovering the first dinosaur bone. Okay. The first dinosaur bone yeah. before the theory and term of dinosaur was even invented. Okay, right. good so one. Discover Moving on here. This like is appendicitis. People died from appendicitis before it had the name appendicitis because sure. things can okay. happen before we name them. Yeah, yes. yeah. They found some big bones. So this one says atheists be like, this is my grandfather, right? I don't know how you guys believe it. And for anybody that needs to know, this is, you need to hear this. Cartoons are not scientific evidence. This is not real. What you're seeing on the screen, <laughs> for due to copyright and violations of certain things, I won't say what this is. Is. This is a cartoon. Oh, so, this is so a cartoon. We actually, just to clarify, we have actual pictures of COVID virus. Like we, we have. We 
don't, we don't even want to talk about COVID. that. If you say those words, we're going to get censored now. Like, 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 know, like are. Did you know I, that? I, I, say, I discuss COVID all the time, so it doesn't normally <laughs> happen. Just Scientism, right? 90 degrees times four equals 360. So a 360 is a square, right? Here, let's go into your actual globe earth proofs that uh, your partner there should have brought up. There's a curve, but you're never going to see it. Wait, There's wait, a spin, there, but there hey, a curve. you're never going to feel it. One sec, one sec. There is a curve and you will see it at 35,000 feet. Oh yeah, right. <laughs> your one friend who's got his... He forgot the camera that he was going to use. And not only that showed us distortion, but there's a spin, there, there but is hey, a you're spin never going to feel it. And you will feel it. Or I don't know if you'll, I don't know if we can feel it, but we can see it with the Falco, with the Falco pendulum. So you can see it. Yeah. Who call pendulum is assisted by electric power. No, nope, They, no, they don't not. just perpetually no, move no, forever to no, jump. No, That's retarded. No, no, no. <laughs> what? So Your cold pendulums go, use a go magnet back in, in order to re Oh, a magnet, force, right? They have to be but plugged not in. not all of them have that. You can build them without those. Those are things. <laughs> so they're perpetual the motion use. machines Run, that you're running, telling me. The first running, perpetual turns, motion machine running, is not a Foucault turns. pendulum. Take turns. So uh, in, in the industrial Foucault pendulums at museums, they use an electric magnet to keep it moving because obviously it would lose momentum and stop moving if they didn't. Yes. But you can just remove those and they still work fine. So you, they, Until they stop moving, moving, right? Until they stop. Okay. And depending on which direction you started off, the Foucault pendulum is one of the stupidest things. If someone super chatted that, I'm sorry they wasted their money. There's a space, but hey, you're never going to go to it. There's will, a force, but hey, you're been never going to be been there. Um, there's a force. You're never going to be able to measure it. We're Freemasons. We measure gravity. Right? So, so we Your Freemasons went to space. Right. Here, before you attempt to insult flat earthers, understand that math and science disprove curvature and motion. Right, get that into your pipes and smoke it. <laughs> what other ones didn't we show? So, at what point does your gravity curving water hoax take place? At what scale does this boat here then go over a, a giant hump of water as proclaimed? The horizon tell part me? at the end, that's where the horizon that's our the vanishing point. Part. This one here, the first rule of spacewalk, Jason knows it do not piss in the pool if you haven't seen this. We can do a few more here. Check this you out. Realize you realize you can piss in your the spacesuits just fine, like those are those are mm -hmm. okay, like they do that here for your fine. audience who might never seen this. So, the claim is that you live on a heliocentric spinning earth and the reason why that was born was because a kabbalistic mystic person infiltrated into the jesuitical order and they brought forth this idea to worship the creation so all heliocentrists that believe they're atheists are actually studying under the highest level of mystical kabbalism that was ever created the psyop of the claim is that we you live do, on you a do realize that zone. religious people can get things right occasionally right that's a thing like mm -hmm. hindus hindus predicted the age of the earth 4.3 if, if they say anything more good. than six thousand they're wrong they're wrong so you, right? so you can oh, believe yeah. things religious people said without actually believing can, the religion because like newton was christian he got he got no like, no newton, no, hey, he newton was, was a pilot the, he was from the newton Vatican. was a great person that you bring up he was the he one was who invented this he, was he a... invented the society of jesus he invented the name <laughs> jesuits and he was a, a raging <laughs> faggot pythagorean <laughs> kabbalist who hated women and forged gold that's your and he came up with your thought experiment he that now people gold, have did he so yeah he, he was he a gold the alchemy, forger but, all right yes and he <laughs> was also a heavy a faggot pythagorean heliocentrist that's where your whole atheistic religion came from was from deep mystical kabbalism right, i think i think you're still confused with people can have beliefs and get things right and you can believe the right things without believing the beliefs those are not the same but, thing but yeah he still on was only a now. geocentrist he was not a heliocentrist at all it's not until the 1850s that heliocentrism right. really got any what, sort of movement what, at all I, I never this one might trigger your that. audience it's irrelevant this one here all these things here we got the periscope lighthouse can, can gyroscope as sun have to go pretty soon too so we got to move to the super chats none of all these right. things can work on a globe i'll stop sharing let's go to the super chats all right Super Squid, Super Squid Hunk asks, how do they dispute the LIGO experiments proving the existence of gravitational waves? The LIGO one where they faked the experiment and ran a test on their whole entire company that you can go and read. They faked the actual data to run a test. Is that what you're using? Whoever super chatted that, get your money back. Yeah, so it's not faked. There's two of them. Yeah, they, they, they actually the psyop their own employees. They came out and told the whole thing in LIGO. We've studied it all. Uh, next question so, so i believe i believe the refutation is nah -uh, the nah -uh refutation is is the correct one i'll let Efont, jason talk i'll be fine asked if water can't curve what's a meniscus a meniscus what does that have to do with the curving of water that has to do with densities and and types of skins that are taking place no, meniscus, wrong, is, wrong, the, wrong meniscus, meniscus is, is the thing is the thin layer that wraps up around the edges so it takes water at scale anytime you're dealing with a, a super fine amount, you can actually get a capillary action that will take water back uphill, right? So that meniscus right there is a thin film. It has to, you can actually get rid of it by um, 
by adjusting its alkalinity, I believe. So, you know, it's like we ask for the, the real proof that 321 million cubic jets? miles of water curves around a giant sphere. And you're going to come at me with a meniscus. You're going to show me this and say that we live on a giant sphere. Do you right. know how retarded that is, T Jump? You're retarded, whoever I, super chatted I, you. Explain to me the 320 million cubic miles of water <laughs> curving on a giant spinning ball, and you're going to show me a raindrop. What? Next question. Raindrop? What? That's not, that's not what. what? <laughs> Move on, bro. <laughs> we got time. You only have so much time. Let's oh, get the where's the more gravity. super chat. Gravity is why the water goes around. Gravity. Yes. Okay. Yep, yep. But uh, but all the butterflies and helium balloons. Butterflies? Uh, totally. Yes. They yeah. don't they're not affected that, by the 320 million cubic miles of water that's held down can, by gravity, but a firefly can just what? simply float up into the air. The so water can, water, can be so water, water so. can be clung to a ball <laughs> like this, but the butterflies can float around. Yeah, so if you shaped water in the shape of like a wing, and you could you could make it fly. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on, you know how heavy water is. What's the net? Do we got more super he chats? heavy water? As in like the kind that's radioactive? It's still water, but yeah, water no, is super heavy to carry gallon. in a pail, bro. Do you work? Do you build things? Have you ever carried a pail of water? Planes it's are heavy, heavier bro. than water is. Planes can fly. Planes do deal with lift and propulsion systems right. to so fly. So if you shaped and water in the shape of a plane, it could fly. Yes. It floats what? in clouds right now, right? Yeah, right, Trilli Jason. Tri stop right now. Of pounds floating water. <laughs> yeah, stop cl it. Clouds are also water. With yeah, dust absurd. particles accumulating in the middle Why of the Why does the atmosphere? vanishing point only exist on the horizon? Why does it not exist in the sky when planes fly away from you? We show the vanishing point from a woman walking down a hallway in a mall. So it's not in no, the sky. No. Why is it only <laughs> no. at the horizon? Why is there never one above things above you, like birds or planes? Yeah, because you'll you'll see that at the distance of the plane that's coming in on the horizon, it'll actually come in above the horizon because of its elevation. Now, if it's a low flying airplane, it'll show up at the horizon in your circle of sight. But if it's flying uh, real high, it will actually just appear from being so small that you can't see it to now being visible, it'll fly across in your circle of sight and then it'll disappear <laughs> before getting to the horizon again. So that's, the distance is why can't it witness. go up and disappear if it's going up? Why do you still always see it? I, don't I, I think he's there's trying there's to there's explain a... why we see the belly of the plane and not the, no, no, the no. back so the of it as it flies around the curve. Is, if something gets far enough away, some distance away from you, it starts to disappear, right? But it only disappears if it's like on the ground. If it's in the air, it goes farther away. You, you said like the vanishing point increases the higher the thing is or something. Yeah, it'll it'll actually disappear up in up in the sky. It, um, you just Moon's gotta watch planes come in and out of your circle of sight. Show show me some of those. I want to see a plane going straight up and disappearing. Not straight up. It's flying horizontally through your circle of sight, but because it's traveling at its 20, 30, 40,000 feet, it uh, you won't be able to see the plane at the at the horizon and you'll see it appear in the air. It's everybody witnesses it that um just go film. Well, that's totally. the question. Why is the vanishing point so much further away in the sky? Like it's infinite the higher you go, essentially. Because it increases your circle of sight. What? Yeah, the, the diameter of your circle of sight increases with elevation. So when you look the up, higher, you have a, the higher you, you go, the larger the circle of sight. <laughs> okay. And the larger vantage point you can be seen from on the flat plane. It works both ways. The higher you go, the more you're able to be seen from. And, and that still despotizes and breaks down around 10 to Jason was going to show what the record was. Was it close to 80 miles? Yeah, 80 miles is, is really the record distance that we have for any ground based observation. So if you're on the ground, and you're filming something else that's part of Earth. We do have um, we do have 80 miles being the record. That's from a, a rest shop on I-90 where you can see both Mount Adams and Mount Rainier. And if anybody can come up with something longer distance than that, please let us know. We'll research and check it out. There's some fake flat earth disinformation out there that suggests being able to see 200 miles, 300 miles. And then people will go crazy and bring in Jay Tolan media and say, we can see 1500 miles. And uh, all this is we can bullshit. see billions of miles. We can see stars. Mm. No, <laughs> no you can't. we have already established you can't yeah, zoom we... anything in beyond the vanishing point. Yeah, we could have gone. <laughs> you, your own teammate stated that we cannot zoom the hull of the boat back in. Right? Remember, remember, vanishing point gets longer the higher up it is. Right. So if there's something directly above you, it doesn't matter how far away it is. 
your vanishing point it's, it can be so then why is it then when we went up in our bloom born experiment on our last podcast on sunday dealing with satellites and planes, why is it that we didn't see any of the stars when we got up into the sky I don't when know you go to a born. certain elevation why do the stars all disappear t jump wait what after what is forty thousand feet the stars there are no at night when, when did this uh, there happen? are when you go in a plane stars disappear at forty thousand, lower than forty thousand feet they're completely gone Go ahead and verify it. Test me, prove me right. Do stars disappear when you are in a plane? Uh, <clears throat> at nighttime, at a high elevation, they do. Jason's verified no, it himself. Getting a, no, getting a solid you, no from everything here. What? No, Why find... do you think that there were no stars in any of the pictures from the supposed moon landing, T-Jump? What? Uh, bad there are no pictures photos? of the stars from the supposed moon landing. It was bad quality photos. Didn't have a, the camera. Yeah. Couldn't pick up the the light. Most likely, I'm guessing no, at if 30, there's at thirty thousand feet at night, plane, but... if you are above the clouds, <laughs> um, you're not going to see the stars, uh, even if there's no clouds below you. But once you're into that range, and um, you can do the Google search, why can't I oh, see the stars? Wait, out wait a minute. I have window. pictures from a plane at forty thousand feet that I was in <clears throat> with stars. Like they don't. But, that's because I, I show flew, us. show us. I flew to on a trip to where I was paid to be a speaker, and we went into a plane and it went up. And or you maybe you were like, it was 4,000 feet from my yeah. girlfriend's right? trip to France. You might have been lower than what you think you were. You have to <laughs> because we've all experienced it. I've been up high and there was no stars. Jason's been up high and there's no stars. So you're not going to tell us that you're the only person in the realm that's ever captured stars from this elevation. Well, I think like you guys are the only people who haven't. That's more likely. The case. <laughs> that's retarded, bro. Do the Google search. <laughs> I, I, I can find it. I can find it. Oh, next question is, <clears throat> what is it? Um, if we had a flat plane that was angled up into the sky and we drove a car up it, are they suggesting that the car would disappear from the bottom as it goes further away? Seems like that shouldn't be too hard of an experiment to perform. <clears throat> it's impossible. It's one of the most retarded things. You want us to create a completely vertical road, the car would just slide Not down. Perfectly. It. Oh my god! It doesn't matter if it's perfectly vertical. It, any any vertical direction up will work at any. Incline. If you have a flat plane, you have a circle of sight that has a vanishing point on it, depending on the height of your observing either camera or eye position. So no matter what plane the flat plane is angled at, you will still lose the object depending on the distance to the vanishing point. So that means the question was, is if we built a big ramp and drove a car up it, would the vanishing point imply that it would disappear from the tires first? That was the question. Jason, what do you think? I'll turn it to you. I'm not even paying attention to that. I was just preparing the preparing to show everybody what the largest telephoto lens of all time all right you can look this up so this here's is i found the Canon. picture meteor shower at forty thousand feet from plane there you go stars you understand that in order to take pictures of the sky at night you it, have to be it takes long <laughs> exposure right you have to it has a very long exposure so if there's any movement whatsoever it's just going to be a blur, blur. right no Yes. yes no <laughs> we filmed the stars you, bro we actually go out and do any, this uh, no that's a, it depends on the stars. camera you're using if you're using it actually an no have camera, you ever garbage, filmed the star trails do that because because jump have you t jump have you ever filmed the star trails or taken a picture of the night sky yes many Were times you stationary any vibration even a, a too much wind will end up in blurred like, literally results. you're just wrong here is a picture from no, a plane window of stars outside of a plane at forty thousand feet no, it's it's CGI. I've already gone through all the YouTube stuff. Nah, <laughs> it's crazy. Nah, yeah. Nah, Listen, nah, you cannot. Nah. If you can take a picture while walking through your backyard, take a picture the of the stars. So, so the question and show was: me. Is if there's a ramp going up into the sky and there's a car driving up it, would the vanishing point imply that the car is going to disappear from the tires first? Everything disappears from the bottom up at a distance. Yes, so, correct. So your answer is yes. I think. Yeah. All right. Um, why are the legs reflected in the photo of the girl? Because she was beyond the vanishing point and she was disappearing into the vanishing point. That's, that's that, that glossy layer where you saw the haze or whatever, that is where the person disappears into. Eventually, if they're far, if they can go far enough away, they will completely disappear into that haze. All right. Uh, it says haze and humidity are causing refraction. 
that would be the, the answer that he yeah. gave air, air conditioned space it was we we chose the location so that nobody could say that it was humidity and, and things like that humidity exists in air conditioned spaces too um heat cold temperature differences cold falls heat rises um turing test thank you for the super chat thank you for the lulls t-jump you're welcome could you please share the details of the flat earth model a maps perhaps from turing test yeah, we can um but you know what that that actually sounds like it would be best suited for our next conversation where we actually go through the the model that works well, do, you, do you have like a, a quick picture you can show people um sure And you are screen sharing again the the OBS screen and all that, but it doesn't matter as long as people can see the evidence that I, you're I clicked forth. on the right one. Oh, did you? Yeah, it's fine. I I don't mind. It's we're uh, not trying to hide anything. <laughs> are you trying to find the picture of the map? Yeah, it's right here. Okay, boom. So, I, I can actually even. It's too bad, uh, Mr. Sensible is not here because. This actually shows day traveling over the face of Earth. So this is a stereographic map that has two polar points and the yellow lines are the tropics, the red's the equator. And what I have is circles of sight that show um, sunrise through sunset. And so if I put this, if I hit play on this, is it at this section or so? <clears throat> I actually put it into, here it is. Come on. <clears throat> so they're, they're right, asking, so, so are they is, suggesting this is an accurate flat earth map? Is that, this is, this is it. Yeah. And it's also your sphere earth map too. It wraps to a ball. This is the same map you need. Well, see, the thing is, is every single latitude and longitude. So, is so there's just to clarify. There's two halves to like Antarctica at very yes. different locations. It's split. It's there's two polar locations, mm -hmm. and Antarctica is split east and west. Have you ever seen a map of Antarctica where they split it east and west? So, so I'd have to. There's no way I could walk from one of those to the other one. It'd sure, be you could. No, absolutely. You got to so, watch the video. It's all explained in it. Yeah, the easy way to explain it is we live in a continuous closed system. To answer the great science question, if there's dragons beyond the horizon, I just took the liberty of just helping George Smoot and the rest of science out. We actually do have definitive proof that we live inside of a contained, closed, continuous system. So there's no way to get from the left side to the right side. So I yeah, you just simply no, walk no. across it. Yeah. What, what? Fly, swim. You can across. you can arbitrarily move the borderline anywhere on the map. It doesn't matter. It's a contained, continuous system in all Wait. directions. So, like you you would if you crossed the right side, you would teleport to the left side. Is that what you're saying? There's no teleporting. Like I said, you can move the imaginary boundary. We've set the map up like this in you, a stylistic way that you can acted, understand the land masses. You've acted like you understand video games and computers, but now all of a sudden you're sounding confused. Well, yeah, in a video game and computer, you teleport from one zone to the other zone. I don't understand. Sure. Like, so you're saying that we're in a, a stereographic virtual field. reality. There's Einstein no teleporting. Einstein Rosenbridge. That no, the no two Einstein sides? Rosenberg nonsense. We're in a closed, continuous system where you can move in any direction and come back upon the original starting point, but there is no else to go outwards outside of this realm, this map that we're showing. This is it north to south east to west it's continuous there's no looping because when you get to this edge of the map you're simply just moving to the next side of the map every kid that did a grade three studies that learned how things would navigate from one side of a flat map to the other understands this you'd have to be brain dead to not understand the concept so, so if i have a flat piece of paper right and there's a left corner and a right corner what what mechanism teleports me from the left corner to the white right corner if i walk off the edge how, how does this work Stereographic virtual reality. Do you understand how uh, video computer games magic. like third? No. What? He said computer magic. Do you understand the principle of how you go from one side of a map in a video game to another? Yes. 
No, computer, if you're in a stereographic bag. virtual reality, you understand. Good job. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Excellent, T-Jump. You got it, bro. <laughs> and the fact that we're able to model it and we put it in games like Atari Asteroids was one of the first helps prove the point. You don't have, you in your debate with conversation with Jason, you pointed out that some of your games are spherical. Yeah, and then you zoom in on a flat map that has a, a circle of sight that you can see. Most maps you have to engage <laughs> into that other section of the map for the light to turn on. You understand all these concepts. I know you do. I, I was just I was just trying to understand. So you, so you think that there's a computer tele, teleportation system that loads no you just made that network. nonsense up i explained to you that it is a continuous closed system so therefore there is nothing else than what you can see but you can travel in any direction and come back upon your start point now we haven't circumnavigated the earth north to south nor do we have any evidence of it but east to west yes we have including the sun and the moon and all the stars they do that every night depending on where you are in the realm all right all right uh uh, Super Squid Hunk asks, is there a way to calculate the vanishing point? How far away does something have to go before you start seeing the bottom disappear? Can they provide a calculation? Um, so <laughs> it's something that you got to test because it's going to be dependent on the instrument that you're using. So whatever camera, whatever focal length, um, that's all going to play a part. So what you can do is just test things. You can measure out distances, see at what distance it starts to disappear for that for that tool um when it comes to the curve calculator as far as how far we're supposed to be able to see it it is relatively accurate from what i've been able to see that um at the elevations if if you type in that you're a thousand feet in the air the distance to the horizon calculator will give you a yes. pretty close approximation of what you're going to be able to actually go out and see and witness Mm -hmm. oh. because they had to back engineer what they called curvature with an actual observable evidence no, no, no. we're asking about did. your your uh circle of vision number that's made up by you and that well, it's no not ours it's, no no it's no, measurable well, no, no. Using so it right off exist. the internet this doesn't distance. exist in in round earth models this is your thing yeah, what? Distance, so you're saying that distance to the horizon calculator well no because no, you're saying that things go up <laughs> a, and they are also affected by this circle of vision everything that thing. goes up comes down yeah what? that's oh. I, did, I wasn't talking about gravity there. So you're saying that this circle of vision thingy, when things go up into into like straight up, like let's say a spaceship that would, could go into space or something, let's hypothetically say there was such a thing. You're saying because of this circle of vision thingy that you think exists, the spaceship would disappear from the bottom up. Of bottom of the so now you're was, asking a hypothetical if a spaceship was to take off and go straight up, it would actually be lost due to its totality of the way that it gets smaller. We can only see things from how this, far do you this, think this you can see a school bus? How this, far this, this, can this, you see a school bus, T. Jump? This is what the questions were asking. For like saying, half a mile. It does the circle of totality thingy that you're talking about affect objects going up? The same way they affect objects on the horizon where they disappear from the bottom up that's the car on they the don't thing. disappear from the bottom up if, if an object was to fly directly above you and straight up it would disappear due to the shrinkage of its totality and size you can only see a school bus drive away so far without the so-called vanishing point in the way that we observe perspective your hypothetical is imagining that we could see forever when objects get a lot smaller as they move away from us so yeah, even that's if we had the question that's the question is is would you be able to see the object disappearing from the bottom up if it was going up? No, absolutely no. not. You need okay. a flat horizon and a plain earth with an actual circle of sight vanishing point to actually measure what we actually measure in reality. Right. That was the question. The question is, why is there the vanishing point only at the horizon and not up? It will go out <laughs> of your circle of sight if it goes up too high, too. Anybody that's let a high altitude balloon go up will know that it went out of their circle of sight that's when they couldn't see it anymore right going yeah. straight up and you're saying that that thing will disappear from the bottom up as well no no and it'll, no. it'll it'll diminish in totality to the point where it's just not visible anymore the horizon mm -hmm. is the is the obstructor um the bottom up so something going away from you on ground on water right that will disappear from the bottom up as you as you're going away but something just just straight above you will diminish in totality because there's no horizon to to block it out okay so the horizon is the thing that causes things to disappear from the bottom up and it doesn't apply to the sky stuff no there's no horizon in the sky it's a vast gotcha. open expanse as that, it that says was, in genesis that was, that was the question that was what no. the people were asking yeah okay good i think good, that's it for the question. super chats uh Thank you guys for coming on. Appreciate the time. And yeah.
Thank I'm you. Ready to close it out whenever you are. All right. Sounds good. Any super chats? No, we're we not, don't do we're, that. We're, we're not monetized. We oh, do gotcha. all this for free. Gotcha. Yeah. Passion <laughs> project. Yep. Cool. Well, thanks again. Let's do, do this again sometime. And all yeah, right. uh, Mr. Sensible was talking about you chatting with fight the flat earth that would be interesting for me to host as well that would be fun. <laughs> too gross too gross well he was trying to say mr sensible jason that uh fight the flat earth maybe he's not like that anymore that he actually okay. he'll treat us with respect he was saying so i don't know we'll talk we'll see what goes on maybe if by popular demand right maybe yeah. i'll I, sit I out can, the next one i feel like i did a lot of talking so i'm good well <laughs> i can moderate i can moderate and be fair I can self moderate. We just, we just, yeah, we <laughs> well, no. So I'd be moderating him. He's that's your concern is him, right? So I would be yeah. happy to moderate and make sure you both get equal time. It'll be great. Yeah. Yeah. As long as we're not under somebody else's thumb, if we're, if we've got the live stream, um, yeah, anybody can act ridiculous and uh, we can just let them go if they can't behave, right? Sure. Yeah. But thank you. And yep. so maybe we'll have the opportunity to go through the stereographic virtual reality explained. So far today, what we've done is we've debunked heliocentrism. We've shown <laughs> people their their small circle of sight and uh, that the sun, moon and stars are actually operating within your circle of sight. And it's been great. Thank you, T-Jump. Yeah, absolutely. I think the best evidence today was presented by Mr. Sensible and his his camera that he actually went up in 35,000 feet. The one he that didn't was... know which camera it was? Yeah, good luck. <laughs> good luck with that. What? Well, the, the cam like, I don't think you have to memorize literally the camera name. <laughs> <for it to laughs> okay, move on. Thank you for yeah. having me. Goodbye, right. everybody.